cancel my five o'clock at the Olive Garden. It's time to talk about Sonic the Movie 2. Robotnik says good people on both sides? Sonic says ACAB? Whoa! Help me, Sonic 1 Kenobi! You're my only hope! It's time to talk about the documentary, the secret Tales' is contradictory backstory, and a dog sitting alone in a ruined house for days. I've got a lot more than that, Dad. Welcome to the Mushroom Planet! Hello, I'm Chris, and with me today is David the Lurker. Oh, hello. MBM. Aloha. Smoothies. Hi! And Games Enlisted. Whoa! There's a second Sonic movie in the world now. I don't know if you guys are aware. It was good. I liked it. I liked the movie. Which one of us hated it the most? Uh I think that's the important question. (laughs) (laughs) The internet likes this movie too much. Someone's got to be negative other than the puppet. God damn it. Teacher, teacher. I I heard it was Stefan. He says that he was (laughs) bored. What did you... Right. How could you? It's Sonic. I I think it's because of cultural differences. It just doesn't land in in Canada. (laughs) That's true. It's a very American movie. It was literally filmed in Canada. Maxi, (laughs) weren't you the one saying to me that there was something that you cringed about in the movie? I physically gagged it during this movie, but we'll get to that later. Oh. Oh. Is it because you saw Sonic? Because, look. (laughs) No, (laughs) I've I've moved beyond the physical repulsion of Sonic. No, No, let's just get to it. It was when Sonic called tom dad i got full <laughs> sonic chew no. vibes i like physically gags like no 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 human is the father of sonic like what is happening here right i mean genetically it doesn't work but is this the point where we should mention that this is all spoilers because i think we already spoiled it um hey you know the movie's been out for a few weeks if you haven't seen it sorry um james marson gave birth to sonic the hedgehog <laughs> you know that now <laughs> We're probably just going to talk about anything, anytime. Like, we're going to roughly go through with the comic and then the kind of general timeline of the movie, but we're going to say things randomly from out of order, so you're warned. I think I might be the one here who walked away from this theater going, yeah, that was, that was all right. Might have might have felt more from the first one, ironically. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm going a little crazy because everywhere I look, everyone's like, oh my god, this movie blew my socks off. Oh my god, oh, the best video game movie ever. And I was like, I liked it. I didn't love it the way a lot of everyone else does, and I feel a little bad about it. Right, right. <laughs> you, you, you gave it a good night kiss and went home. You didn't take it home with you. Yeah, I wasn't like, look, second date, you need to come home. I was like, you know, maybe after our Knuckles date and the third date, we'll, we'll start thinking about it, but... I mean, Ken Benders is looking at me through the window, so... All right. I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, like, in around that same thing, where it's, like, as I was, like, as I was watching it and as I was out, I was, like, you know, that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is a, that is a good, pure, solid film. Just something that I, I enjoyed watching. I think it was just, yeah, they, they did everything it needed to do very well, and it has a couple holy shit moments thrown here and there. And it's, like, you got, you got those sprinkles there that make you go, like, oh, yeah, that's, that's so cool that it's in there. And then the rest of it's just, like, oh, yeah, th- th- this, is, this is nice. It's like, I'm glad I watched this, I'm glad that this exists, and I'll probably watch it again when it comes out on the Blu-rays. And it's like, yeah, and then you're excited for the more stuff, the more, you want more stuff from these, from these characters. Like, it it kind of reestablishes both the game characters and the the original cast. It's like, yeah, you want to see more of these, you you like them. Ooh, we had different opinions, so I like it. Okay. (laughs) The prequel comic. Um, Is there anything... It, it technically explains some stuff that the movie doesn't, and it also technically contradicts some stuff that the movie <laughs> does explain. Um, yes. It it also may have the most villainous depiction of any character in this movie-verse so far, and I didn't expect it to be from this character. Um, shoot, David, or Steven, thanks for pirating this for us, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thanks for doxing me. It was actually David. <laughs> That's right. What I did is I went to comicsology.com and I typed in give me Sonic comic free and they said why and I said because I'm bullying you and the website said here you go. <laughs> Jeff Bezos has enough money and they went you know what fair point and then they gave it to you. David yeah. you didn't tell us you were a hacker. <laughs> comic all, comicsology went Bleh, and then I went the prequel. That's right. It was um yeah, the, 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 the prequel comic, which came out a week before, I guess I should mention, like, I know, oh, why, mm. why are you talking about a comic before the movie? But this is, the comic was written by the same guy who wrote both novelizations, uh, 
Kyle? Keel? Figley? Figley. Look, it, it, I'm sure it's pronounced one way or the other, but I forget which <laughs> one. We could be sure of that much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can be um, sure his name is pronounced a way. Right, he, he's also the one who wrote the Sonic the Hedgehog Tales of Terror uh, book, uh, in which Knuckles says, I don't believe in ghosts, even though in Sonic Adventure 2 he clearly met a ghost and went, oh, a ghost. So... But it does have a sequel to Sonic Unleashed in that book, so it might... It, it's fine. Either way... Um, yeah. You know... <laughs> all right, I, didn't... I liked this comic. I'm not out here screaming for, like, a monthly miniseries or anything. But I went into it thinking, like, all right, let's see what this is. And I walked away going, you know what? This was actually kind of fun and interestingly written. I mostly liked the art. I think Tales of the Little Beard. But, you know, other than that... Yeah. I, I was surprised that it was because I, I was expecting it's just gonna be oh here's just random stories of like the characters in this universe but I was surprised that it actually was trying to be like a prequel setting up like leading into the events of the movie with like answering like some question of being like oh here's this one story with that, that like, starts off with a Sonic just fighting a bunch of like uh, bank robbers and it's like oh there is like a point of it being like uh, uh, the, like how Agent Stone gets some of uh, Eggman's uh, technology back and and then you have like how Agent Stone got the became uh, manager of the Mean Bean, and then you see like oh how did Knuckle like you, it's like I feel like the only real question it it like answers is what the hell those weird uh like uh like free like freaky like lizard looking guys that were at the beginning of the movie were and it's like <laughs> oh they're, they're like they're just weird yeah there's weird mercenaries that like captured Knuckles and then Knuckles was like hey want to help me and then you, then you have like, the tails trying to find Sonic and then. Uh, Eggman uh, drinking some mushrooms. <laughs> the Eggman story was a little weird because before this was coming out, they were like, "Oh, it has input from Jim Carrey," like gently suggesting what it should be. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, that will be interesting." And it's mostly him getting eaten by mushrooms and going, "Actually, no." And then it ends, and I was like, "Oh, all right." <laughs> well, I think the part that he mostly influenced was the fact that Robotnik gets high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. didn't take five panels yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i like i, I read it and i was like okay what, what 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 input did jim carrey have and then i saw i think it was yeah, steven like showed like an interview where 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 he was talking about how like oh if robotnik had the right amount of mushrooms he wouldn't have left the planet and i went no oh. if he found the if he found the right type if of he mushrooms he wouldn't have left the planet that's a lot oh right carrey. he said that in almost every interview <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh i get to hear this joke this many times thanks jim <laughs> it, it's a good joke I mean, eventually you find the one that kills you and then you can't leave the planet. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's what he meant. Maybe I like mushrooms on pizza. Yeah, I, they're OK. Yeah, a little, a little too uh, chewy I for want me, a I think. Pizza. Can we David, a David, one of these days, I'm going I'm to make you a fantastic pizza. You're going to eat it. What? The walls might melt. They might breathe as well. Mm. But just trust me, you're going to love it. I like okay right so so the comic <laughs> David no sold that one he's like actually no the comic the comic like I don't know I got I this. like my walls non melted <laughs> I like, well I don't want to well, my my, my psychedelic ever... pizza offer still stands right the mm -hmm. only the only mushrooms I've ever had are are ones you can get at a grocery store or from your local pizzeria um, <laughs> but I have seen. The other kind. How rude! My plug shops at grocery stores. <laughs> I want to go back into the 1960s with Jim Carrey, and I want to eat a pizza with him, and we can put whatever mushrooms we want on it, and it'll be great. Although I don't know why we're going back to the 60s, because it's not like Jim Carrey was famous in the 60s. I think he was literally a child, just born. Yeah, yeah. like he is yeah. 60 years old. I think now or 61 or two. That's so right. He would be a baby. So canonically, this is important. Jim Carrey is the age that Robotnik is supposed to be in the games, right? Nice. <laughs> can we can we stop this bit? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, right. the The comic itself is fine, I think. But if you read the comic and then go to the movie, that it is it is confusing. It's a little thrown off. But, uh like I think that the tail story is the biggest point of contention. But the, there is some weird stuff with the Agent Stone story as well. Like, if you look at the what what the first movie does and what the second movie does. And then there's this weird comic in the middle. So, later, I think, I'm going to say that maybe 
I, and by later, I mean, I guess I'll say it right now. I think the comic works better in the novel universe than it does in the film universe. Oh my god, because there's two. Yeah. Well, ho- we'll hold on. With, with, with Stone being included in the comics, then, does that make him the biggest Eggman simp in the comics? Or is that is that award still held by another? What? Well, I just mean, like, has he been in the comics before? I don't know. No, just just for the prequel comic. Yeah, just just okay. the one. The for for so the purpose of comic go. conversation, we're talking about the only comic that's meant to fit into the game universe. Um, uh. Yeah, because because um, well, novelizations have a, a, an important role when it comes to uh, movies in general, right? Uh, you talk about like if you've ever read the Back to the Future novelization. You would be very confused because there are very uh, important differences between the two because the novelization is always based on a version of the script. And by the time they start shooting, the script can go through a lot of transformation. But uh, like the novel has to be written and ready by the time the movie comes out. So there can be stark differences between the two. Uh, sometimes it's just, oh, deleted scenes. But other times it's completely changed motivations. That's why something like the... Um, Episode three, Revenge of the Sith novelization is so interesting because it like it deals with the more subtle versions of of like, oh, how did Anakin become Darth Vader before George Lucas went, I'm going to restructure it. So it's just Padme dies. I cry. Uh, There were there were more layers to it, which, of course, get explored. This is not a Star Wars video, but uh, (laughs) because babies. Right. So what what's you might be the only one here who has read the novelization to Sonic. What? Yeah. yeah. What? What? How? What? What are you getting at? <laughs> um. Well, there are things in the novelization. Um. For instance, okay. So the Agent Stone bit is all about the, uh, like the robotic manifesto, right? That's curious. And sending a random woman to prison. Yeah. Right. And and you read that, and you're like, that's interesting <laughs> yeah. because in the movie, there's no mention of a robotic manifesto. There's no mention of like. It just seems like he's sad, and he opened up a coffee shop, which might be really all that happened in the movie but in the novelization we get something like i followed your instructions to a t sir stone said as a computer screen emerged from inside the bean grinder from the robotnik manifesto section 5 article 12 in the event of my capture disappearance or account suspension on social media there's a joke construct a secure (laughs) safe house built to my exact specifications and await my return so you have like oh the version of the script that that Kyle read informed the story he wrote in the comic, because also there's a, a there's a bit when when Tails first shows up, and um, where where is it where where they talk about the the Master Emerald right uh, where he mentions. Uh, where, where Sonic's like, oh, the Master Emerald, that's just a bedtime story. And Tails goes, no, it's real, it's just been hidden, and its location is the most closely guarded secret in the universe, Tails said. I should know. I think I'm one of the few left still looking for it. Oh, Which completely, that's way different. It is! See? So, like, the huh. novels are going off of something else. Because also, for whoever read the first novel, like, oh yeah, there's a couple different things, like there's more explanation about Longclaw, there's the fact that Agent Stone is the one who set, who shows up at the Wachowski's door at the end, instead of hmm. the General, who, ooh, he's got a General new, Walters? General Walters! He becomes important in the second movie, but but yeah, so like we the, can we the can no- now call him the Gun Commander. That's right. <laughs> oh, uh, right. I guess. Or that- as Tom calls him, the Olive Garden guy. <laughs> right. God. I think that's his canonical name. If you look on on any of the Sonic wikis, that's what he's labeled as. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so there there are some differences. So I think the comic works better if you read it between the books. But it's going to be more confusing when you read it between the movies. So that means we are establishing there's at least two. Sonic film universes, and I would wager as far to say there's a third, but I'll save that for now because we should talk about the movie, unless somebody has something oh, no. else to say about the comic. I found the uh, mercenary character design interesting because I thought the bird beak would mean that they were like disciples of Onkla or something or looking for some kind of revenge, but they seem to very readily go along with Knuckles. 
after he beats the big random lobster thing. So I don't know why they have like these explicit bird beaks if they're not going to be tied into the owl versus echidna or and that's basically all I had to say about that. I found it confusing. <laughs> and all and also the uh the the chaotix are there for some that's, reason. That's right. Oh, and What? Are they? Good for that. They... Oh yeah, they are there. They're in a panel. Oh. Weird. Yeah, they're, they're in the background in Casino Night when they go to Casino Night and it's like, yeah, it's like if uh if you feel was was that was that Evan who drew who drew that the knuckle story? I think so. I think it was Evan Stanley. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was I think it was Adam Brace. I think Adam Brace Thomas did the the first Sonic one. Uh, Tracy Ardley did the Stone and uh, Eggman ones, mm-hmm. and Evan Stanley did the Knuckles and Tails ones. I think. Mm. Oh, uh, the the lizard guy is in the tail. Yeah, the, the lizard from the Sony ones. Yeah, he he appears, and I, I thought that I thought that was right. a cool. Uh, Rava the Destroyer hint. lives in the Marble Zone for some reason. I I mean. <laughs> I did like the oh look it's 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 bits from the games and it's like oh that's neat will we see that in the movie no no I mean there there is one zone that really gets featured in the movie but we should wait till we talk about the movie because that that are you ready to talk about the movie I love I love talking all right let's talk about the movie all right I saw a movie 18 minutes in are we ready to talk about the movie (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, there's a movie thing on. I gotta go and see this. Oh man! Well, I think uh, the text and the big booming orchestra, where it just says "The Mushroom Planet" is the best way you could have started this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really grabbed me. I was like, "All right, I'm ready for this film now." <laughs> yeah, oh, I was not right. expecting a little stylistic flair like that. So I was like, "Yeah, okay, let's go." Let's go. I like the text. I like we we start with Eggman because that's where we left. Sort of. I mean, technically, in the first film, we left with Tails, but that same scene is recreated later in the movie, so it doesn't matter. Mm. We end with Eggman, we begin with Eggman, because Eggman is the best Sonic character across all franchise, all the all the Sonic franchise, but, man, he's still not fat. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I still mushrooms like Mushrooms don't have a lot of calories hey now don't don't shame jim carrey he he, he has the body he has <laughs> all right apparently in his interviews jim wanted to have a fat suit and everything but yeah. i guess the director eh, didn't uh, i could have gotten a little yikesy just just let let jim be eggman <laughs> wouldn't be the worst view jim carrey has <laughs> no you're right <laughs> Right. Well, I guess it sounded like he all, he pushed for the the mustache, and that maybe originally they weren't gonna go full stash, and then decided to go full stash. I was sort of I, I like I like around. how like movie Eggman is his own identity with his own look. Like yeah. all things considered, like I, I know it's like to a negative, but like O six Eggman is memorable just because he just stands out. But like <laughs> in the movie, it's in a good way. But I like that he's his own look and his own character. So, you know, let it be. Mm. I feel yeah. like they settled on a good look for him here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't need the fat suit for him, I think. I think I can look at him now and go, yeah, that's an Eggman. Whereas in the first movie, he was very much just like a dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was such a dude. Uh, but now and he was so rude. Now he's a double dude. V- very, very kin to Borgie. Uh, so he's oh. been on the planet for 243 days. Ooh, not even a year. And he is narrating to himself. As one does. And he does a lot of spitting. <laughs> I liked his Rue Goldberg machine with the little uh, Sonic figure that he made. It gets squished, but it's adorable for like the 10 seconds of life it exists. <laughs> it, it is featured in sprite format at the end credits as well. So it's important. Now to clarify, because... Uh, my movie theater experience was a little active and distracting. Oh. Did this M- Rube Goldbergian machine of his generate the portal? Was that his plan, or did that just happen to happen? No, he was bored. <laughs> it made his you coffee. Know, now, now that I've said it out loud, I guess it is a little silly of me to ask that, isn't it? <laughs> right. It, it it very much fulfills the same role as the Rube Goldberg machine in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which is yeah. simple. <laughs> it makes breakfast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're right right that's the first thing i coffee. thought of when i when once i realized we're we're in coffee town i was like oh it's like peewee <laughs> wow someone used to edit in that um that danny elfman music over that scene oh okay, yes <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i i liked it i liked the, the reintroduction of eggman who i guess is mostly referred to as robotnik 
I guess Sonic is the only one who really likes the nickname, and everyone else is like, no, that's not his name. What are you, why are you trying to say that? Why are you trying to make it a thing? But that's his name. Because if anyone in those movies had somehow played games that shouldn't exist in their universe, they'd know his name is Eggman. <laughs> I don't know, probably ties more with the look. He doesn't look as eggish versus Sonic saying it, it comes off like, you know, like a, just a childish insult. So, you know. Yeah, in the interview, um, Jeff Fowler says um, Sonic calls him Eggman because of all of his robots look like eggs. And he does it that to too. make fun of Eggman. Right. Even though we now have robots that don't look like eggs. There are buzz bombers in this movie. So. B-Man. Right, and then I guess the Death Egg Robot, which isn't called the Death Egg Robot, it's just a giant Eggman robot, according to merchandise. Because you have bought your giant Eggman robot playset, right, from Jax? With the exclusive spoilers. It's so cool, dude. <sighs> dude, the mm-hmm. Supersonic spoiler thing was nuts, because I heard it on, like, the actual radio. Like, I was driving to work, and I... <laughs> what? Yes, I'm in the car, Aww. and I heard on the radio that they were talking about that people were upset that McDonald's had a supersonic toy, which spoils Sonic, and I'm like, oh no, it's ble- we all are bleeding over, you can't interfere with the real world, you're supposed to stay in the Sonic box on the internet. Like, guys. Like... Yeah, I mean, McDonald's spoiled it, but that broadcast spoiled it too. Even right. more... It was great, yeah. It was... <laughs> That's not fun. Oh. I, 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 I was able to remain, like, spoiler for, like, I was able to, I, I was able to, like, to make sure, like, like none of that was spoiled, like, spoiled, but, but, but just the fact that people were talking about spoilers was, was like, okay, I kind of have a feeling what's gonna happen, but it's like, I still don't want anybody to actually tell me, and thankfully I was able to avoid all of that. Right. <laughs> Someone DM'd me a picture of the post credit scene and went, ah, oh, can you believe it? And I went... You know, I want to see this movie, right? And they went, oh, I, sorry. I can't believe you do that to me. Yikes. <laughs> Why? I was like, what are you doing? Come on. But we'll talk about the post credits later. Like later in, like the post credits of this video. Because we have credits, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we got the Korean animators to get that done for us. <laughs> I can't wait to see movies in sprite form. <laughs> you already have. Well... Yes. That's true, we have. I, I guess that's Actually, um, the people who did the sprites are fans. They, that is I think true. one of them posts on Retro, actually, funnily enough. Uh, that is true. That is true. But... Anyway, Knuckles comes out of the portal. Whoa! What? what? Okay, right. Because the people before him don't speak and don't matter and are probably never going to be referenced again. So Probably. I mean, even <laughs> in the comic, it shows that they don't speak English while everyone else does. So it's like, huh... I, it, they're just super unimportant to ever. Did did Robotnik kill them, or are they also stranded now, or are they even stranded because maybe they have rings? I'm a little confused about the rings. Okay. Yeah. It the entire thing felt a little like overcomplicated to me, just because they never actually came back. I was like, why didn't you just have Knuckles come through and him be like, "What the hell are you?" and him be like, "What the hell are you?" Right. Well, I guess I'm looking for the thing. Well, I can help you. Well, I guess What's Robotnik... weird? In... Oh, go on. So I just thought it was kind of weird because, you know, it's trying to do the SA3, like, Eggman tricks Knuckles. But, like, in the game, like, Robotnik's in a position of power. Like, he has all his stuff. He's able to trick Knuckles. Versus the movie starts with Robotnik, like, stranded, like, needing help, needing help from Knuckles. So it just, it does make it weird that they were trying to do that same adaptation there, but, like, completely changing the power. So... Oh, no, I feel like that kind of contributes to how why the beginning's a little messy. I think the idea is he was trying to, you know, he, he sets off the, the big uh, EMP or whatever uh, device, and then people come to check it out, and then he incapacitates them, incapacitates them, and then takes, like, their portal or their ship or whatever to get out. Like, I think mm. that was his plan. Yeah. Okay, that makes he sense, wasn't ex- actually. He wasn't expecting Knuckles to come through. No. So yeah. no he-, he just talks to Knuckles. I think the EMP thing is what I missed about all of this, actually, so you saying that makes a lot yeah. make more sense. I, yeah. I saw someone mention that the EMP looks like the uh, the the, you know, the the Mushroom Hill device that shoots out the thing that changes the weather. Like It looks a little like that. I didn't think about that. That's it did. Yeah. Hmm. 
It's a Sonic reference in a Sonic movie. I, I think the mercenaries are pretty much just there to kind of have like a mini action sequence at the beginning just to be like, oh, instead of just Knuckles showing up and then they talk, it's like, oh, it could be a thing of like, oh, having Robotnik just like be, be, uses his ingenuity to beat the shit out of them and he, think he's gonna, he thinks he's going to escape and then is surprised by Knuckles and then it's like, oh, and then that leads into the whole thing of like, oh, he's looking for Sonic. Be like, I know where Sonic is. Let, 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 let's, let's help each right. other and mm. then movie starts proper. Right. It is lucky mm-hmm. that he had it set up for just like three people to come through. Like, he, was, he wasn't expecting any more. Like it could have been a full army. What would he have done? I, it's because he he's a genius, David. He would have used his smarts to talk them into doing whatever he said. Duh. Well, hmm. maybe he only set up, set off three traps. You think about that? Yeah, maybe there were more traps. Oh, that's true. <laughs> maybe. And then Knuckles was There just were so... no more traps to set up. Right. And I guess when Knuckles came out, he was so close. He was like, whoa, I, I wasn't... I would have expected everyone to come out at once. Not not for you to wait until all your non-friends died at my hand. Are they dead? Mm. I don't... I, I haven't figured that I out. I guess before. they're just stranded on the Mushroom Planet now. Maybe that'll be the next prequel comic. Like, what are those guys getting into? I mean, unless they have... <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> They might have rings on their person. See, I don't... Are rings hard to come by? Are they easy to come by? How... Um, jumping ahead, there is a moment where Sonic loses all of his rings and needs Tom to use a ring. But it just seems like Knuckles has rings, but he doesn't have anywhere that he shoves them. And I guess Tails would also have rings because he showed up. And I feel like if rings are the only way you transport, you want to have like a lot of rings on you. So when yeah, Sonic and lo- in the comic, yeah. Tails is throwing them out like no one's business. He's just like, yeah, I'll just throw these everywhere. I don't fucking care. Right. Well, he, he, he probably <laughs> has it. Well, I mean. He pr- I don't know. Rings are probably common in that universe. Like yeah. it, it's said in the first movie that they're used by all uh, advanced societies. Yeah. So Tails can probably just go to the dollar store and <laughs> get them. To steal them from a register. Yeah. Right. It almost becomes a time travel thing where it's like, well, if y'all can teleport wherever you want, where's where's the drama, guys? Well, you 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 also they also like a thing like, oh, you need to like know. Like where exactly you're gonna go? Because it's like, oh, because even like when they have Tom like save uh, Sonic, it's like, oh, he has to show him a video of where they are so that he can do it. He can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna do the mountains. Here you go. It's like, no, he has to see uh, mm. an image of the mountains in order to do so. That's true. That that's a uh, that's a good ad for FaceTime. I mean, the reception in Siberia is fantastic. <laughs> wow, love it. How uh, is it the <laughs> middle of the day in Siberia and Hawaii? Well, look, <laughs> um, it's the, s- the morning in Hawaii and the early evening in Siberia. Maybe It'd be the opposite. Oh, no. well, either way. Right. You wouldn't get married in the morning. You'd get married in the afternoon. Right. So that you can party into the night. Woo. Woo. Man. Huh. <laughs> I've never been married. I, I wouldn't know. I guess. Huh? Uh, I, I've never been married either. I've seen marrieds. I mean, weddings. <laughs> You've this, seen marrieds. All things considered, this was a pretty good like wedding movie. <laughs> that's that's mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, is it better or worse than four weddings and a funeral? There was no funeral, so hey, that's that's right. There almost was. Almost a lot of people almost died. All right. Well, I feel like some people might have died. All right, because if we go back to the beginning of the film, <laughs> Sonic could have accidentally killed a lot of people, right? In um, Seattle, almost killed a kid. He he did almost kill a kid. That was there's um, I mean I I I thought it was it was neat. You know, like there's the bit in Seattle. I was like, whoa, Seattle, that's cool. Uh, the running around. Um, I know it's sort of uh, the prequel comic also repeats the idea of Sonic tries to stop a thing, and I guess he does, but he does cause a lot of collateral damage. Well, which he I does. thought I thought Sonic was just repeating like Tom's like arc from the first movie. Like he's in the small town being a guardian, but he wants to be the bigger town guardian. I thought it was supposed to be like that but then like the movie doesn't even really kind of acknowledge that either so i wasn't no, I, sure the, the the movie is very much mm. i guess sonic's arc is supposed to be what like oh you 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 will be a hero like that seems to be where you're heading but you still have to grow up like grow up? like you're dead yeah. like oh you're a kid you should enjoy being a kid until you grow up which which <laughs> um it's a weird thing to think about because traditionally Sonic the Hedgehog is always shown as someone who is pretty competent, you know, like he might screw up from time to time, you know, he's not a perfect character, but there's never the sense of like, 
oh, he is a kid. Like this, the the movies are the first time where they really focus on the idea of Sonic being a kid. Um, in the literal sense. Yeah, I mean, in the annoying sense. Right, and 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 sometimes it does feel like they lean a bit a bit too much into the idea that Sonic is kid, as opposed to oh, Sonic's Sonic a is team. baby. Right, because I guess in the '90s, when you're a teenager, you're the hippest, coolest thing that's ever existed. Like, you can do no wrong because you are a teenager, even if you accidentally, you know, cause wanton destruction. You're still a teenager. You're still cool. Uh but but here, you know, it's we're in 2022. You know, being a teenager, you're still you're still waiting, you know, for that moment. And I guess I guess that's what that's what they're doing. Maybe I. It, it, it's an interesting thing to think about because it it does deal with like like you said, and the, the 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 moment that you thought was the most cringiest. I didn't think it was the cringiest, but it did throw me off slightly. Was hearing Sonic even utter the word "dad"? Um, yes, because, I think leaving that as an implication would have made me feel less weird instead of outright being like, "Oh, thanks, Dad." Right? No, my dude, <laughs> it, it gave me full on like sassy pinocchio father vibes <laughs> right can i go on my own well because <laughs> that bad because if Longclaw is his mom and thomas is dad does that mean at some point if Longclaw ever returns and is like i'm not dead is he gonna try and make tom and Longclaw get together <laughs> she just pushed maddie out of the picture and be like all right but i know like a real woman it's like maddie is all oh it's like hold on because yeah it's tom and maddie because she even says in the movie that that Sonic is their kid. She uses our, so, like, hold on there, <laughs> David. Like, I know you're master of lore, but that doesn't let you go around wrecking homes. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying I'm wrecking it. I'm saying <laughs> Sonic might. Master of lore, wrecker of homes. <laughs> My favorite part mm-hmm. of that, that part, that when, when, when Sonic calls Tom dad, mm-hmm. is Tom <gasps> doesn't really respond. He just says, uh, race you to the truck. <laughs> right because afterwards he's like oh my god he just called me dad i'm not supposed to be his dad i'm supposed to be his best friend why would he call me dad that means i have responsibilities that means i have to raise him i have to pay for his college i can't pay for his college on a share of salary like this isn't new york city this isn't san francisco i'm living in green hills Setting up sonic the hedgehogs <laughs> college fund oh like, my god. it is a weird shift because in the first movie yeah it was like the buddy road trip movie right it right. wasn't like the i didn't want a kid but now I realize having a kid has unlocked all these parts of my humanity. Right. Kind of movie. Right. <laughs> I think the I- the idea of it is at the beginning of the movie he says you're supposed to be my friend, not my dad, and at the end he's like, "Okay, yeah, you can be like a father figure to me." <laughs> right, cuz okay, cuz now he has friends. Uh, cuz also one of the things is like Tom goes, "Oh, I wish Sonic had uh, a friend group, a posse." Uh a yeah. th- what what's the word they use? A sc- <laughs> Uh, Not a squad. 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 Is a it group? a squad? I don't know. Well, no, uh, hold on. Because, because, hold on. Wingman. Because Tom, says wingman. Wingman. Because Tom mm-hmm. gets the idea of this from a very, like, obs- like a skewed group of cops. <laughs> and it's like, yep, I want that for Sonic. It's like, Tom, my dude. Tom is a cop. That's the only future he can see for Sonic, is the thing. Uh, this movie lets you forget about it pretty easily, but he is still a cop. That That is true. In, in the prequel comic, they they they're like oh remember he's a cop because the first story in the prequel comic does have tom go oh we have to think about the fact that robotics technology is out there and other people might try to use it feeling like oh is that setting up the sequel no it doesn't because robotnik shows up (laughs) and robotnik's the only one who uses his stuff why would you think anyone else would dare it's robot and it's funny like agent stone has like access to a lot of robotnik's tech but the whole movie doesn't do anything with it no he he um <laughs> he he works in a coffee shop. He's very sad because Robotnik isn't there for him to kiss. <laughs> He's um, in love, my dude. The 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 the, the best joke, the, the hardest laugh I had in the movie was that first scene when we see Stone and he's making the little latte <laughs> of him and Robotnik, and he's just staring at it all sad. And then the man, the man just shows up and destroys it, and he's right. like, "Freak!" Oh, that's, that's right. I, that, that might be my favorite part of the movie. It's not gonna lie. <laughs> it's Agent Agent Stone is good. I I like the fact that he. He's still there running. I mean, even though I guess if you really wanted to think about it, like, why would he be super devoted to Robotnik? Couldn't he have just like, instead of hiding out in Green Hills, couldn't he have just stayed in the government and maybe done stuff if he really wanted to try and find Robotnik? 
Well, that's oh. what he's doing now because he's he was disguised as a gun officer and he overheard their conversation about Shadow. He did, but that's so not now because, he's doing that. Right, but he wasn't disguised as a gun officer because because he was one undercover. He just <laughs> presumably knocked somebody out and stole their clothes. Like if no, he, but I'm saying. I'm saying because he went on, because he got in that disguise, Mm -hmm. probably just so he could sneak away. He overheard that conversation, so surely he's going to start doing that now. Right, but I I guess that raises the question: Was he ever kicked out of the military, or did he just happen to be doing this coffee shop thing, and then he got called on assignment to help clean up, and then he's like, "Aha, I'm here," and I heard that because I I don't think they ever directly say like he quit being in the military, right? Right. No, yeah, no. They, they, they don't say anything about that, yeah, because in the first movie, he just disappears, and they yeah. never, like, reference him again after that. Yeah, and then we see him here, he's just doing the stuff. Right. There, 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 there's, the, there's the whole thing where, like, oh, like, like, Wade, like, Wade tries to arrest him, and then he gets teleported with Eggman, and then, yeah, and then in the end, he's sneaking away. So it's like, yeah, they never actually say what, like, what is a Stone's connection to the military anymore. It's just, oh, he's he's just doing his own, he's doing his own thing, and nobody's, he, everybody keeps forgetting about him, so he can just sneak away. These- yeah. Movies have such a bad habit of just like forgetting about the the human characters once they're done with them. It's like, <laughs> wait, no, like they exist. Please, my yeah. my like suspension of disbelief. I need to know right. that they're still I continuing mean, you, to go on. If you want to get weird, like the the reason and we they, do right. The reason they disown <laughs> Absolutely. at the end of the first movie is because he gets defeated by Sonic and is sent to a mushroom planet. It's not like we don't have a sense that the military is going. Oh no, Robotnik is not doing what we want him to do. He is doing what they want him to do, which is you know figure out the mystery, discover Sonic, acquire him. Like that's what he's doing. We never get a sense that the military is against him just that they're going to disavow him if things come out which is what they do they pretend robotnik doesn't exist if robotnik mm-hmm. returns why would they immediately think he is villain why would robotnik assume that he has been ostracized from the military like why do they come to that conclusion all he did was get defeated and sent to another planet if he comes back and is like i'm here i returned let me continue my thing the mili- they were probably yeah. they were probably pissed off at him, like you know, setting off a bunch of missiles in <laughs> in San Francisco. Something about endangering yeah. civilians. Oh and- well, you know, would anyone notice it's San Francisco? Yes, the whole city would have noticed. <laughs> that whole town saw that thing happen at the end and had to just be like, well. Eh. It's, it's, we live with this knowledge now. The whole town uh, noticed. A wise fox the- once said, "All's well that ends well." And and, and they and they established <laughs> that pretty much nobody they established pretty much nobody in the military like him. So it's also a thing of like, yeah, it's like it's like, yo, the, the Eggman calls them some shit. So now he's gone. It's like whatever. We don't have to worry about him anymore. It's like it's pretty much just just the the commander guy who was like, oh, like he he he's very useful. We can use him. And literally everybody else is like, he's fucking crazy. We don't like him. So it's like, yeah, it, it's it's only uh, idiot gun commander mm. who who's like the who is the only right. one on Team Robotnik, and then by then where it's like, oh yeah, he he probably knows now that oh yeah, yeah he he he's now now like by the end of the first movie he realizes that oh yeah he's too much trouble to deal with. So when they they see that he's back, he's like, oh shit, gotta go deal with him now. Mm. Is the movie acronym the same as the game acronym? Uh, yes, it's it's Guardian. Yeah, yeah, units, Guardian Nations. Units of Nations. Yes. Um, which which is interesting. So they they, they they even actually make a they even make a joke about the gun about the gun acronym. That's right, because Rachel's in this movie. Do you remember Rachel? <clears throat> she's the one. Who yes, got and she's like one of the in the first one, one of the best parts of this movie, dude. That's mm-hmm. right. She she becomes an important subplot because um, you know looking at the the advertising, it seemed like oh we're gonna shove Tom and Maddie in uh, in Hawaii. And then maybe Sonic will show up at the very end and go, oh, no, and leave again, which is what it it felt like. Like, oh, we just want to ignore all the humans. But then they throw this wrench in. And by the wrench, it means the gun commander and also the fact that Rachel's wedding is an entire farce. um, Called Operation Catfish. Operation Catfish. If I wasn't in a theater full of children, I would have audibly screamed. If I, if I heard <laughs> when I heard Operation right. Catfish, I was like, no, <laughs> it's like Sonic movie too savage. 
I I really like I, I really liked like that part because I I liked that 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 they, that they they took the whole they took the whole wedding like subplot which which we we just assumed is oh it, it's it's just dumb filler to give Tom something and then it's like oh it's actually it was this all elaborate scheme to connect to them to try and capture Sonic it's like oh I I, th I think that like that that whole way of connecting it was genuinely great and surprised me it's just the the whole thing with Rachel and uh, her fiance of being like oh I was lying to you but I actually secretly loved you all this time. Her and just that, that whole stuff. So I just just didn't care about yeah. it. And especially the fact that, yeah, like once they come together and then the movie completely forgets about them. So it's like, yeah, what was the whole <laughs> point of just lingering on like them two if it didn't actually matter? Yeah, yeah. I added up all the minutes of all the wedding scenes and it's 17 minutes. Wow. You could have cut you could have cut 10 minutes out of that. I think sure. what bothers me a lot about it and like I'm not trying to be the guy who's overthinking the kids movie too much. Right. Like. <laughs> Some things got to be silly and some things have to be stupid, right? Like, it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But the gun commander was literally at their house. Do you know where they were? This is so much work. Why wasn't it just they had a wedding and then the gun commander showed up and helped ruin the wedding? Why did... <laughs> They're the military. They know yeah, these I, things. They are, I know it's. I mean, it's weird. Right. Even the idea of we're gonna have a sting operation in Hawaii doesn't make sense because Tom and Maddie leave. Sonic is not with them. If they know where yeah. where they live, then they Gun just, go just goes to their house because it's yeah. Like Tom's Tom's neighbors <laughs> are nowhere near. Like there's just a lot of trees. They could yeah. sneak in and go. Hello, Sonic. It's me. Uh, the gun. Com I mean, General Walters uh, or Waters or whatever his last name is. Uh, for for uh, you don't for Operation it. Catfish to go all according to plan as they claim, there has to be a line in that ledger somewhere that says, "And then Sonic teleports out of the <laughs> ring and an avalanche comes out." And, and then that's when we, we get him. And that's our signal. Like <laughs> if it, they, he says, "According to a mission, great mission." Like. So you were ready for that. Okay, yeah. great. They, Good we, job, we, Gun. <laughs> that is, it is weird. Cause there was just an assumption that he'd like pack Sonic out to Hawaii for this wedding. And no, he's taking numerous phone plan. calls. Nobody's like, hey, go over and like see what he's talking to. He must be talking to Sonic. The Hedgehog. Right, because yeah. who else is he calling at that point? He's not, not he's his not, family. He's not calling Wade. <laughs> Wade's incompetent. He knows that. He's like, I'm just going to leave Green Hills and hopefully when we get back, hey. it's not gone. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the ducks can still cross the road without me there. <laughs> you you right. leave you leave Green Hills Sheriff for the weekend alone. He's doing a he's doing That's a fantastic right. job. I, I do find it funny that the Mad Libs that we did uh, explained yes. more <laughs> about what was going on with Wade than the movie did. Oh Wade! Yeah, I, I, it was so funny after we because I, I we're reading that whole Mad Libs book and then watching the movies, being like, "Holy shit! This Mad Libs book has so many more references to the events of the movie than I expected." <laughs> That's right. The, the Mad Libs book is an important canon, but the question is: Is it purely film canon, or does it involve the novelization canon? Oh, I don't think it's the third canon you were talking. No, about. No, no, the third <laughs> canon is something else. We'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I think like. The hardest part for me about this movie with the human characters, I think, is that it's definitely going away, like, more... It's definitely doing more to portray the humans of the Sonic world as, like, these weird, eccentric characters, by and large, which I, I'm i kind of jiving with, so I'm in the awkward spot of, like, I like James Marsden in this movie, I like I like Maddie's character, Tika Sumter, um, the gun commander being, like, obsessed with Olive Garden canonically now was a little weird, but I was like, yeah, I like I'll, I'll take I it. <laughs> like, I'm liking all the human characters, I just don't want to spend so much time with them, which feels a little paradoxical to say, right. maybe. But I think I think the the issue is because yeah, like because yeah, yeah like the, the the human characters the the like pretty much other than Tom and Maddie who are like the straight men is mm -hmm. that all of the one like all of them are pretty much like cartoons. It's yeah. like yeah, like Wade, Rachel, the Gun Commander, Agent Stonic. They're all just cartoons. It's just a weird thing of like yeah, like they'll 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 like throw them in. They'll give them like a lot of time focusing on them, kind of doing like their like bits, and it feels like a lot of improv. Like they feel like like all of them are given like a lot of improv to just <laughs> kind of like say jokes off the cuff, but. But then they just kind of forget it's like but then they just kind of like throw them to the side and forget about them yeah so it's like this thing of like oh they they want them to be in the movie but they don't really want to go all the way to make them like characters and i think it's like oh if you take uh, officer wade out of the movie the movie doesn't change <laughs> at all <laughs> yeah. that's right he he shows up and arrests well i guess arrests stone and then robotnik shows up spoilers and goes oh you're not under arrest stone you are wade ha 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 i'm green 
and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Right. But like, I think what oh, and and the, and the whole scene with uh, Sonic t- and Tails, and when when they're working oh, along, oh yes, uh, Casa de Wade. What is it called? The they Wade? could have gone anywhere. They didn't have to go to a garage. Yeah. Like I, I, I think it's a thing of like, oh, like they, have, they want to have these guys in because it's like, oh, like they, 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 they like the, especially the filmmakers like like them, but they don't want to go all the way with making them like. It's like, yeah, like, if you want, like, if you gave Wade a little, either didn't have, don't have him at all, or give him just a little bit of like agency, and it's like, oh, like, it's like, st- like Stone's in there, and every time Stone's in there, it's good, but it, it feels like he's not in there enough because it's like, yeah, he's there for a lot of the beginning, then they just kind of ditch him for a while. He like pops back in. He does a little thing like right. in the climax and then just kind of gets knocked out. And then, and that's about it. It's like, yeah, he's, and then yeah, with Rachel, it's like Rachel gets a lot of stuff during that, that wedding subplot. And then once it's done, that's it. Just forget about her. She doesn't need matter anymore. Like, 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 let, let, let's, let's be truly honest. The, the Russian dancer had more oh, character than Wade had. <laughs> like the Russian dancer at least has a whole arc where you're like, who be this? And then, then you find out and it's, it's a lot. Uh, but versus Wade is, I mean, he cute, but that's about it. That's how I was going to say about Stone. I feel like in the middle of this movie, it was just begging for like a scene of him sad and like dejected and being like, why would he come back to this world just to leave me without a word? Because literally in the movie, he just, they just ditch him and Nickman's like, ah, oh, you know, fuck that guy. And not then he time. just gets Gaussian blurred even more into the background until the movie needs him again. I was like, if you're going to lean into this with this like coffee shop coffee art thing which is incredible go all the way with it yeah exactly like what Stefan was saying like i just wanted him to kind of question it and push back a little bit and be like why am i doing all this for him and then maybe pay it off later and him be like who else would i want to work for exactly let's go not attack the town that's right anyway well i guess uh, I love the dancing in, in the novelization <laughs> this is exciting um oh uh, Agent Stone does not get a text message from Dr. Robotnik. Dr. Robotnik calls him while he's standing outside <gasps> of the establishment. Oh. Yeah, isn't that exciting? He, he, he uses the That's telephone. some Nikki FM shit right there. Yeah, he's like, oh, because you hear, uh, you hear Stone karate chop someone in the neck, apparently. I'm telling you, true love. True love in the Sonic universe. Right, because cause, uh, you have Robotnik call. And he's like, prepare my latte. And then Agent Stone's voice perked up with a new robot-like urgency. Sorry, folks, I have to close <laughs> early. I'll leave when I'm ready, twerp. The trucker's voice snapped back. He didn't know what he was in for. I didn't want to have to do this, Stone's icy voice said. And with a loud chop, the line was overwhelmed with the screams of would-be interlopers. <laughs> Wait, did he kill them? What? Oh my god, that would have been really funny. Why isn't that in the movie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess it was like oh. it's it's too much, it's too much to deal with. Stone is, yeah. is innocent. He's we have to have this whole scene where they rescue Sonic and Tom the cop because Gun has kidnapped Tom. Also, uh, that's right, they do <laughs> kidnap Tom. It really feels like they had like a whole Netflix series of content for like this movie, and they just had to like shave it all the way down to two hours. And even two hours, you know, for a kids' movie is a bit much but mm. like mm-hmm. i'm just impressed at just how much content they really had to go into this movie right. they, they had a they had a lot of ideas and they were juggling a lot of things um it it uh. the the first film you know i guess it's it's a sonic film that it focuses on sonic um the second film is very much like oh we're really exploring the world of sonic because we get tails and and knuckles and you know there's the master emerald and the labyrinth zone and then and then also like there's the tornado and like all this stuff but the first film i guess as a film is far more focused on what it wants to do and the second film goes oh we want to play with uh, a lot more things but is a little less focused on exactly like what the the core theme of the film is like what what the actual arcs are because if Sonic's arc is I'm waiting for that time to become a hero that feels like it's on the back burner because then you get the introduction of Tails and Tails idolizes Sonic but then I guess you also are dealing with Knuckles and his arc you know and like mm-hmm. you only get some of that although I will say I really do enjoy the fact that this movie shows Robotnik and Knuckles working together because even you know in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 the game like we know that Eggman has tricked Knuckles but through the game it's just Knuckles like dicking around with Sonic on his own until we get to the Hidden Palace Zone in which Knuckles learns that he's been tricked 
we don't get to see the two really work together. We don't see Eggman messing with Knuckles' mind. We don't see, like, what it is he's doing. Uh, and we really get mm-hmm. that here. You know, the the, uh, the film, like, it, it is merging Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 together with some adventure references sprinkled in. It is It feels far more like a Sonic movie, but... I, I think sometimes it does lose a little bit of focus and I'm like, well, like would like an extra 10, 15 minutes help that? Or because even like if you trimmed out most of the human wedding stuff, like I feel like there's still a couple things that are missing that would really tie it in to make it like super, super duper strong. I mean, I still really enjoy the movie, you know, like but I'm then excited, we wouldn't have time but... for the Barracuda scene. Barracuda. <laughs> uh Oh, right. Dun, 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 so, dun, 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 so, like, when the Russians dance, I know you mentioned the Russians. Look, Sonic We have to Uptown talk Funk. about it. I mean, Uptown Funk, my bro. <laughs> Sonic plays Uptown Funk. but Why didn't he just run fast and get the map? I mean, he could have yeah. done that. But here's the thing. Why play Uptown Funk when you should play <laughs> Work That Sucker to Death? It's sitting right there. <laughs> it's pretty much the same song, except it's better because it's... <laughs> You, uh, well, David, my aunt Nancy on de- Facebook wouldn't recognize that song. David, yeah. you debatable. You what? joke, oh, but work that sucker. Like the full version of work that sucker. Oh. Like don't play the bit. Right. Okay. And work that sucker to death. In the extended version, there is a there is a, a weird diversion with a Richard Simmons parody. Like, okay, don't put that in the movie. But <laughs> I mean. The actual song, it's it's funky, it's from the 80s, it was used in a Sonic game. Well, if we're going down this road, the logical conclusion is, why don't they use more Sonic music? And the answer is, they just don't seem to want to, so, <sighs> you know. Yeah, except the cheaper. <laughs> right. Although they use the drowning theme for two seconds, but it's hard to identify in the movie, because Sonic's drowning. <laughs> they just wanted to flirt with that while not paying royalties for it, I guess. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, okay, I, I know it, it costs money to license things. It sounded like, I thought I had heard or read somewhere that in the first movie, Junkie XL was interested in using Sonic music but was told no. Uh, probably because the budget was cheaper. But then the first movie came out and it was a success. And Paramount went, we can turn this into a huge franchise because clearly we're planning a TV show and a third movie and who knows what else after that. Yeah. So, oh, you got a bigger budget. So Junkie XL, you're gonna you know call up and, and license songs from Masato Nakamura or perhaps you know from Sega themselves, and I guess the answer was, no, nope, no, I don't wanna. Even though the trailer has Emerald Hill Zone, like that's the tease, that's the thing that hooks you in because even the original yeah. Sonic trailer doesn't have like a Green Hill Zone motif in the orchestration or the the York- yeah, like. You you teased mm-hmm. it. You're promising it to us, and then they go, "Never mind. Here's Uptown Funk," and I mm-hmm. go, "That's why." I do think it, it, there is a lot of like it's probably a lot of like from like Paramount and like the front like like the higher higher ups. They're like, "We want like we we want we want uh uh pop, yeah. pop songs in the movie." Like yeah. like I feel like when it comes to like the score itself, it's like yeah, that, that that'll be on more of like yeah Junkie XL and like whatever like his like whatever his decisions are for the actual song but then like when it comes to like the music being played it's like yeah like they want they're, they're like oh we want pop song because like oh, th- th- this is a kids movie and like kids movie like kids yeah. they like they want to hear songs that they recognize so it's like yeah it's like I, I don't mind like I don't mind like when it's stuff like, like like in the first movie I don't mind if it's like oh songs I enjoy and it's like yeah it's like I like buy like Uptown Funk I like Barracuda it's like yeah it's, it's fine it's okay like, because yeah, you had yeah Don't Stop Me Now and you had uh God, why am I blanking on? <laughs> but there, there were, there were like more, uh, like yeah, pop songs. Again, yeah. she's paradise. The first, no. <laughs> I, but I feel like the, like with the, with the licensed music though, I feel like the first movie's choices were a bit stronger than the second. Like, I feel like the first movie kind of had all of the, the really like A plus, like gotta go fast song choices. Like you had, don't stop me now. Versus this, you know. Sonic dance into this is how you do it is you know it's fine it's okay it's in, it's the same genre it's the same time frame of music it's just I don't know I feel like the the choices were just a little not not as solid but I mean you have a whole Barracuda scene which is amazing and is a, is the one of the best parts I loved it <laughs> <laughs> and and they, and they play uh, stars in the sky at the beginning the original song oh, of mm. course. Oh, right. Kid Cuddy's own. Which, Kid Cuddy. This is, okay, this is where it dovetails. The third movie continuity, I would argue, is the version of the story in which various rappers assist Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> as we've seen in, in the two music videos, you know? Okay. Yeah. I think that... Did, 
David, that's better you can't, than I was expecting you to say. <laughs> you can't just go and tell people the plot of my visual novel game where you play as Sonic and you can date any number of hip hop artists that are in a high school with you. I swear to God, David, I will get you booted off the internet. <laughs> right. Got to got to get got to connect with Kid Cudi and Wiz Khalifa and Ty and Ty Dolla Sign. Right. Cuz they all they're helping Sonic out. I I watched the music videos. They are integral cuz in the in the in the Kid Cudi music video, it's not just Sonic fighting the the Death Egg robot. Kid Cudi is in his own robot. They're fighting together like there's a clear completely different final act happening in in the music video version of the sonic film franchise this so. is this is all part of the kid cuddy love path so if you <laughs> romance kid cuddy and you give him a present on his birthday you could see kid cuddy at uh, under the the cherry blossom tree at graduation you never know sonic yes yes dad the, 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 okay, the, the, the one thing I do think is genuinely, like, like, like legitimately, like, excellent through the whole, th- like, it's the reason why, like, the, the, it's, it alone puts this movie up a couple points, and that's Knuckles. Knuckles, like, his entire, his, his performance, his look, his character, his arc, everything about Knuckles through this whole movie, like, he, he, he pretty, he pretty much, like, steals the whole thing and carries the whole thing on his shoulders. Stephanie, I disagree. Just, Idris El- I disagree. Idris what? Ilba promised us that he would not voice Knuckles sexy, and he lied. Yep. He lied for the whole movie. Idris, yeah, Idris Elba's voice, yeah, he, it, it fits it so perfectly, and I just love that it's, like, it's a great combination of, like, m- pretty much all, like, the Knuckles, because you got, like, a lot of the stuff of, like, oh, classic, uh, 16-bit Knuckles, then you got some of Adventure Knuckles, you got a little bit of Dan Green, uh, you got Dan Green Knuckles, then you got some of Boom Knuckles in, with his kind of, like, with his kind of, like, like dopiness, uh, Drax-esque, uh, taking everything seriously, and it's like, oh, they, 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 they put, like, the seriousness and the jokiness of Knuckles, like, like really excellently and it's like they do a really great job of like showing like yeah the whole thing of like oh he's very focused on his mission you have like it's all sprinkled throughout of like oh he's with him working with robotnik and the little things of him like being like oh questioning robotnik's loyalty but also questioning sonic's loyalty and being like oh who is the real like man of honor here and then like how it like leads into the end it's like like because i i was so expecting like by the end it, it to be like oh knuckles is gonna leave and then maybe come back at the end but it's like oh the fact that like they immediately all come together like right there and then and like he they're they're together for the all rest of the movie it's like oh it's just it's just it was so like nice to see it's like oh because you're thinking that knuckles is just going to be the loner the whole time but like even he embraces the whole like oh like the that fam that found family aspect that also sonic does and it's just like like he, even him being together with sonic and tails at the very very end like as part of that big family it was, was just so like it just it made me feel so good and just I, I loved seeing like the interaction of him playing baseball and just getting really excited about grape flavored ice cream <laughs> Did you like when he climbed the wall at the beginning too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one of my favorite parts in the movie is when he's climbing the wall and he says to Robotnik, "You think these machines are a match for me? I'll shatter them like the bones from a fallen." <laughs> oh, they are stairs. Yeah. <laughs> they are stairs. That is a good. Becca thing. and I, I went to the. Uh, I saw this with Becca, and we both laughed a lot at that part. Mm. When, when, when they're reading uh, Tom's uh, Tom's texts, and he just says dot dot. Dot, mm-hmm. dot, <laughs> dot. Right. Uh, I think this is my favorite Knuckles. Yeah, N- Knuckles is good because it, it's also, it's not like, you know, the, the game Knuckles where it feels like they, over time, have just written him to be dumb. It It's a very believable na- naivete when he reads the dots or is like, oh, I, I know the world to be just one thing. And it, mm-hmm. it works. It, 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 it fleshes out who he is because we only have so much time with knuckles because got to juggle a lot more things in this movie but i do i do like it uh and then even like the little cracks that show like uh you know after the, the snowboarding scene and sonic you know goes after tails to help him and knuckles is a little confused by that because he's like oh i thought you're just a terrible person but why are you helping anyone i don't understand but it, it isn't enough for him mm-hmm. to completely change yet but it's like oh there's a slow build to when we finally get to the point where robotnik reveals his deception and i like it and boy can i say something about that ah! oh 
I, I think my biggest issue with this movie, and I know in saying this, there are a lot of qualifiers that go against me even having this issue. I wish Eggman in this movie was a little more serious and a little less jokey and a little less Jim Carrey. Yeah. I know that they cast Jim Carrey to be the jokey guy. I get it. Mm -hmm. I really do. I wish it was reined in some because there were points where I was actively groaning at things he was saying or doing, yeah. like flossing and the knuckles. Yeah. It'd be one thing if Knuckles was like, what are you doing? But he just kind of looks at him and is like, yeah, okay. But the fucking line that has lived rent free in my head for a goddamn week and change now is when Knuckles is walking toward a Master Emerald there. Eggman is charging up his fucking electro gloves and he's like, oh, my friend, you're as useful to me as a backstage pass to a Limp Biscuit concert. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Shut up. Oh, <laughs> Sam's going to kill you. Well, you know, if this movie had been released, what, 20 years ago, that would have been very fun. It, it could be a reference to anything. It's just like, why do you have to do this at this moment? I expect Sonic to be the pop culture slinging guy. Because, like, A, I've accepted it, and B, yeah. he grew up watching fucking Tom and Maddie's TV all the time. So, like, yeah. okay, I get it. But just give the scene a little more seriousness sometimes i think it's what i needed all the way up until the final act i was like why are you air strumming your leg guitar right but i don't know even his last this is my line issue. i've not seen in the movie everyone i've talked to about this has just been like oh well they cast jim carrey he's really funny that's such a jim carrey thing to say i'm like ah right what if it was an Eggman thing to say it's not, it, it is it is interesting <laughs> right because i feel like in the first movie i mean jim carrey's still doing jim carrey things but it's not at the same level you know like he yeah he goes further in especially because it almost feels like some of the pop culture references he says would be beneath beneath uh movie one robotnik um if, if there had been something like oh he's stranded on the mushroom planet and all he has is like a box Limp biscuit cds right like if there was something like oh all he has is <laughs> but it wasn't is... even a year yeah but i mean if you're alone for 260 days and all you have is like a couple of biscuit cds and, and maybe i don't know the gilmore girls season three just season dude three. i can only uh, listen to the nookie so many times before i have to sell my car <laughs> right like like maybe it would make more sense why suddenly uh, this has become part of his personality, just like how when he shows up at the Mean Bean for the first time, he's like, oh, this could use some mushroom. Like, clearly things have been messed with in his head. Uh, yeah. So if, if, there, was, if this... there was something there, like, oh, this is his only source of entertainment, or are these things that he would normally consider bottom of the barrel, but now it's all he is, all he has. That That could have been something i think the way he acts is fine it's just yeah like a lot of the specific references and like the actual written jokes that he's like doing is like yeah it's a it's a bit like eh, to, yeah again like you okay like so, okay so wh 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 which character in the third movie is gonna floss this time that's right it's gotta be someone we, we have to keep yeah we, there, we, 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 we gotta we, we, we gotta keep <sighs> that going now so how many specific references i believe are there? the kids call this flossing yeah how many specific references are there to the first movie in this movie? uh he says uh meow in the tavern this yes, time he does the meow we uh, does the floss, the floss. Uh, uh sonic does the pew 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 again very briefly remember the uh when he mm. when he when the snowborn because that's the only time we see slow-mo is when he like goes through the uh I, you know, I found it interesting when that he's they, doing ice when he's doing ice cap. Oh, right. Olive Garden comes back. Right, Olive Garden comes back, uh, and um, <clears throat> I know there's a lot. And it's more unlimited than ever. I mean, I guess you you could say like the Austrian goat milk becomes a super reference because what was like a throwaway line in the first movie becomes an essential plot point in this one. <laughs> uh, Guys, for the Sonic 3 movie, they better have an unlimited chaos control soup salad breadsticks tie-in. It better uh, happen. Uh, I need it. <laughs> it, it. It is a thing of like, yeah, you could, where like the film is very like, conscious about like the internet like the internet because it's like oh like they're very leaning into things that were like very memed a lot where it's like yeah like they leaned into uh stone's coffee thing which which was just a throwaway gag in the first one and the olive garden thing where it's like yeah mm -hmm. like they're just throwaway gags that like people very memed a lot like memed a lot online so they're like okay well we'll like lean into that and make that the defining characters of these like very blank slates <laughs> but i will say mm. 
that the the use of the phrase gotta go fast works better in the second one oh, than it does in the first because so good yes in the first one he just wakes up and says it for no reason like it's just so we can say the thing from the song but in this one he's like he's building himself up you know he's he's gone through like oh you know he's at he's at the lowest point because he's like oh i i I've gotten tails hurt. I'm not the hero I'm supposed to be. I, I just have to do this by myself. And he's like, I got to go fast, like faster he, than he, he ever literally has. has to. Right. Like he's talking himself up. It's it's a very natural use of the phrase, you know, kind of like mm-hmm. how, in the you know, the, the, the Richard Donner Superman movies, whenever they would throw in the phrases like, uh, you know, truth, justice, in the American way, or you know, like, oh, like it's integrated into the dialogue a bit more naturally, depending on the context, it's not just <laughs> said. So here, it's Sonic just just saying it in a way that really works. So I was like, oh, wow, yes. it's so much better here. But but there were a couple other times, kind of like the meow, where I'm like, oh, you're just doing it, aren't you? Why would you? Oh, come on. There's one I have to mention and then immediately debunk, because I was so worried they actually did it. Mm-hmm. But at the very beginning, Eggman says to Knuckles, you may recall a meme from a few years ago mm-hmm. where Knuckles is searching for a way, yeah. you could say. Mm-hmm. And Eggman no. says... But I can show you the way, and I was like, they better not have. So, of course, like any sane human being, I complained on Sonic Retro, yes. but Tyson actually responded and said, no, that was not intentional. So, thank God. But if anyone out there also had that thought, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't think about that. I didn't even, that didn't even cross yeah. my mind. I <laughs> audibly groaned in the theater for what it's worth. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Because we were all in the theater, if I remember, watching it with the cast. Uh, yeah, we were all there at the premiere in L.A. No. Um, Sam Procrastinates was there. Wow. He saw all the madness. <laughs> uh, wait, what was the... Because the, I was trying to figure out is the, the, uh, the uh, fake Sonic that Sonic leaves uh, on, like, the, 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 the that Sonic makes when he's, like, oh, out, uh, out about that Tom finds. Is that supposed to be, like, the, this, this movie's Sonic? I was trying to figure yeah. out if that was, like, specifically a reference to something. Because I, I was trying to look at it and be like, does that look like anything? Does that look uh, like any, like, it, bad it's, Sonic? It's like it was a callback Sonic. to the farts from the first movie. There were a callback, which is funny. I listened to an interview where Pat Casey was like, I didn't write a fart joke in there. I didn't want a fart joke in there. They put a fart joke in there. Oh, whatever. It's a kid's movie. <laughs> but they doubled mm. down on the fart joke in this one. Like, Sonic's like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm passing gas. Here I go. I'm yeah. like I, I I I like a fart joke as much as the next guy. I just don't want to think about Sonic farting because just like I don't want to think about his feet, you know? Like same. I hate fart friend. jokes in movies, but I will say the absurdity of the line I knew I should have used real farts. <laughs> I mean, how can I not laugh at that? That's just so fucking stupid. Oh, no, like, yeah, okay. See, though, okay. F- f- fart jokes when it's fart jokes when it's not talk about real farts and just the concept of farts are funnier than like if it's just somebody yeah. fart actually farting. I was like, this is awful, but like it's at least funny, so I'll pa- give it a pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, we, 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 we were expecting like there were that like the like they were gonna do like uh, I was surprised there was no uh, original movie Sonic joke of like oh like they're like they're, 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 there's like somebody was like drawing a picture of like oh I I saw this thing and they they show a picture and it's like old movie sonic and they're like that that, 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 that looks terrible and throw it away mm-hmm. i'm surprised they didn't go that far i mean we got old egg man i'm looking to see if there's a fart in the in the novelization um <laughs> although although, <laughs> uh, although apparently uh original movie sonic is going to be in the chip and dale movie so we'll have to wait to that to see that oh what? no yeah, so because if you know that in the the, the the upcoming Chip and Dale movie, there's like a scene where like they go to like the the uncanny valley CG world. Like they've seen the trailer where they have like oh a Beowulf guy and the 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 the, the cats CGs, and apparently someone put online that original movie Sonic is going to be there too. But, <gasps> oh so lord, we'll see. We'll see if that actually ends up happening. Yes, miss uh. another timeline, David. Mark oh. it. Oh, here write we go. Write that down. Write that down. Oh. In in the in the novel, it's not because of a fart. Tom Wachowski woke to another perfect morning in Green Hills. The dew on the leaves glistened gently outside his window. The smell of <laughs> the smell of fresh coffee burbling in the pot drifted upstairs from the kitchen, and a trail of slightly singed one hundred dollar bills drifted in a cross breeze along the upstairs hallway. Wait, that last one was odd. Tom knew where the bills came from, of course, but how they got there was a question that was a difficult subject to broach. Maybe it was worse than Tom thought. What had Sonic gotten up to this time? So, I guess uh, Sonic was just messy, and he saw the money and went, hmm, no fart machine at all. Interesting. Yeah. 
That's that, a, that's that's better. Uh, <laughs> right, because then because then also so, wait, I forget in the movie does Sonic go? Oh no, you've you've dragged me out to water, my one weakness. When they have the conversation on the boat. No, um, no, he enjoys it. it. No, he doesn't say it. Oh, because yeah, no. I don't remember him saying that. Okay, because he, he just says he can't swim. I think right because he says boats. it here. This so this was your big plan: trap me on the high seas and bust me. You know that water is my kryptonite. <laughs> uh, Superman. Yeah. So mm. like you know like there's there's um there's definitely I I'm guessing that this is closer to the you know the the script and that mm. you know some of the changes was must have been later or done like on set even. Um, I think I liked how the movie handled that more. Not gonna lie, him just saying I can't swim, and James Marsden being like, "Well, you know, you've had a nap and a shower. Let's talk." I don't know. Right. I Gave me a little tickle in my funny bone. Ooh. <laughs> Sonic's but, tickling you. But maybe I just like James Marsden a lot in this movie. I don't know. <laughs> He's pretty good. And Sock, uh, Sock not being able to swim actually pays off because you have like the whole scene of him like having to run like like the, the great scene of him running toward uh, the labyrinth zone where it's like oh because and it, it's a great thing because normally we're so used to oh Sonic just runs down water and it's fine but it's like no he's actually has to go through like the waves and like there's actual like yes. physics going on of him having to jump up and down and like get his speed like going it's like oh it's it's, it's, a, it's a really cool the use big waves of like actually so like how good. yeah. Yeah, how running on, like, through the ocean, like, would look like. And then, of course, you have the thing of him saving, like, having to save Knuckles, and, like, oh, he, he, he can't swim, so he, like, sinks all the way to the bottom, and, like, you get the very cute thing of him s- sipping the, the, the air bubble to get some more air, and it's like, oh, it's cute. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, and then it, 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 it actually, like, worked. Him not swimming actually works. Does it make the sound, though? Right. I don't I don't think it's the actual sound. Yeah. I, it I makes mean, a little sound, but it's not like the boop, boop. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Like no, it, it, it's it's not the original. It's not like the right, classic no. sound. It's just it does make a noise when he does. I remember that. Uh, I think it's just like. <sighs> I right. just remember it looked really unsettling, and I was like, "Oh, that's how that would look, wouldn't it?" Weird. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Technically, in the soundtrack, there is a bit of drowning music that happens there. Like you hear the, da, 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 you know the. Right. Oh. But it's very brief and obscure. I want to say something about this soundtrack, which is that uh, it's all synth. There's no orchestra at all. Oh. And it's. Yeah, it's it's all fake, and it's like I guess they ran out of budget. Like if you cut out, you know, ten minutes of the tavern, ten minutes of the <laughs> wedding, you would have had enough money over left over to get an orchestra. Man, it's it's interesting that they actually went to Hawaii to film that. Hmm. There might be something to that, like that, or they just ran out of time. I I don't know, but um, a lot of the shots in this movie look very unfinished and rushed. Like say. Eggman flying in the ice on the mountains. Siberia and how he looks juxtaposed against it while flying around was yes. I, I actively noticed that and I was like, oh, that doesn't look good, does it? Yeah. And some of the action shots are just really motion blurry in what seems like more than a stylistic choice. And I was like, hmm. And now that I know the orchestra was synth, interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. That's, uh... A lot of people haven't noticed when I brought it up. So I guess it's not that big of a deal. But to me, it felt like I was listening to one long episode of Sonic X. Gotta go. <laughs> I don't even remember the music. Not gonna lie. Like, I just completely... Well, there, there, there was a, a little bit of Sonic X uh, reference, right? If Sonic do- dodging the, the punching of Knuckles, a lot of people are like, oh, that's from Sonic X, is it? Maybe, I don't know. It's just um, a JoJo reference, guys. Come on. Oh, right. <laughs> there, there's also a, oh, there's, there's a definite reference to Sonic 06 at the end of this movie. Which I got excited about. Which one exactly? <gasps> the whole uh, movie didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. Oh, not, <laughs> not, not like the end. End. It's it's when super when you see Supersonic. What's the last thing he does to the Death Egg robot? Oh yeah. Yeah. He does a little tip toe thing. A little toe thing, which is like oh, oh yeah, he pushes it over. Sense, which is funny. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. in my head, that registered as an unleashed thing more than a. It did. Thing. I thought that was that what that was too. Yeah, the, no, the the whole that whole super like not only did Supersonic look almost exactly like he does in Unleashed, but like the whole like conversation that he has with Eggman, where like Eggman's talking and he's doing the thing behind his back, and they're like, yeah, this is literally just the Unleashed. Only Sonic actually the only Sonic Sonic like doesn't like get get stopped. Right. <laughs> oh man, doesn't get werehogged. Right, because I know we're jumping around. You've just around. been werehogged. Right. I, okay. Right. So. One, I got I got very excited about the Labyrinth Zone because, okay, you know in Sonic the Hedgehog won the game. 
uh, there's Green Hill Zone. Everyone's like, I love Green Hill Zone. And then Marble Zone happens. People are like, I don't like that one. And then Spring Yard happens, and they're like, oh, I like that one. And Labyrinth Zone happens, mm. and they said, I've given up on the game. Well, I thought it was funny <laughs> that the movie went, Labyrinth Zone is the only level we're going to actually reference in, in this, like, properly. I mean, I guess Ice Cap as well. actual like, Labyrinth. But it's the actual yeah. Labyrinth Zone. Look, do you see those owls? I see those owls. Do you see the waterfall diagonal? Oh, I yeah. see the diagonal. Oh, Sonic's going to do the air bubble? He does. And so it's like, hey, you know, that level is actually really good because it's actually, like, super iconic <laughs> and establishes Sonic. as. Yeah. It also has it also has a lot of Lost World from Adventure in there, plus also mixed within with Hidden Palace. That, that is true because i mean you do have the uh, like the actual temple it's very lost worlds yeah. in the credit my hope was that um you see him go down the labyrinth waterfalls which was i was freaking out uh-huh. for that then you see you know the maze and like all the walls along the top and i was like it'd be really fucking funny if he just ran across the top of this whole maze and the scene that follows was really cool but i was really hoping they just play that as a bit of a joke he's just like ah doop, just goes across it oh. when they had so much issue going through it earlier right what what if because like why didn't knuckles just climb up and glide over i don't know what if during the waterfall <laughs> bit like there were the warp rings and so we just kept on doing it over and over and over again <laughs> he's like i gotta jump what oh yeah ah. knuckles doesn't really glide i mean he does do like that like charge punch at sonic but does he ever glide no knuckles does not yeah he doesn't collide at all in the movie depends if you if you count him jumping off the plane or not, <laughs> he doesn't really glide. He just oh. sort of falls, but he falls with style. <laughs> so. My <Yeah>. dudes, <laughs> the helicopter had SA two on it as well. It actually had SA two greater than sign, so we know which side of the debate the helicopter in the movie's on. Right, no, so we, we can't trust these people. Is all I'm hearing. There's a lot of planes in the, the tornado is in this movie. I got very excited because it looks pretty proper. I know it doesn't say Sonic on the side. But it's the tornado. Like it, it looks more like the tornado than the tornado does in Sonic Adventure. <laughs> you know, we needed. I want to fly high. Because yeah, the, the, when, when they showed the plane, like do it, like for the in the wedding, when it's like, oh, it has the thing, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, that that that's that's how Tails gets the tornado. He steals it here, <laughs> and it's yes. like, oh, yep, there you go. Oh man. So he's a criminal too. They're yeah, all but, criminals. I mean, he's from another planet. The laws of Earth do not apply to him. <laughs> diplomatic immunity so he's an illegal alien oh no well they don't apply for him but they apply to him in, I would say. in the novelization <laughs> knuckles calls sonic the child of mobius and tails explains that they are all from the planet mobius isn't that <sighs> interesting so knuckles is the last echidna on mobius yeah like in the novel so so, it is, so wait so, we are from mobius so at some so at some point since what happened at the beginning of the first movie to the second movie? All of the echidna died. Did they say like what killed them all off? Well, yes, the uh, Ice Age. Knuckles, <laughs> Knuckles says um, they were on the cusp of finding the last uh, owl warrior, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then he says uh, that was the last thing that I heard my dad say. So I guess Longclaw killed them all before she died. It's a little confusing, isn't it? Like. They all just killed each other, I guess? Yeah. But... That's the only thing I can come out out of that. Well, I think Knuckles says, like, that's the last time I saw my father, right? Which, I mean... Because are we we to assume that, like, a baby Knuckles found his tribe just dead? Or is it like they disappeared? Because if they just disappeared, hypothetically... Because I was like, oh, you know, they could bring back Longclaw. We didn't see her die. And in this movie... We still didn't see her die, and what's more, we didn't see any echidnas die. Hypothetically, I think Longclaw's dead. <laughs> Hypothetically, well, well, they could have. Be- maybe also be- kids' movie logic of we don't actually want to show any dead bodies, mm-hmm. right? But then also, it's be- like, be- is, is oh, I want to hear what David has to say. Right? No, I'm just, I'm just wondering because they still are a little like, oh, we're not going to show it specifically. Like we don't, we don't even have a scene of like seeing Longclaw fighting the echidnas we still it still gets cut off when we have a little flashback of from sonic's perspective and from knuckles it seems like that was it i didn't see him ever again they never came back like un- unless he actually saw the battlefield and everyone was gone i i feel like there's still like this little window where they could go everyone fell in a hole and they're stuck there <laughs> and, and- <laughs> 
I'm subscribing to what Stefan said. I think it's just because it's a kids movie. They don't want to show you all that. Mm, I, I think that makes the most sense, especially because the especially because the whole thing is about yeah knuckles being like they like they're, they're, especially like, if they want to f- go follow the game specifically mm-hmm. they want to be like oh knuckles is the last of his kind so it's like yeah like the, it, it would be a weird thing to do all like I feel like the most they would ever do is like say in in the knuckles series whatever they end up doing with that is maybe knuckles will end up searching for like more information about his past like, maybe he'll find one more survivor or maybe he'll find people that he thinks are survivors but it's like oh no they're actually Thinks. Well, maybe so I feel like that that that's that's how far they'll go. I don't think they're gonna be like, oh, a whole bunch of echidnas are still alive. It's actually Chronicles. Oh, maybe they were warped into a pocket universe and they're all living in a city called Echidnapolis. Uh, no. <laughs> you know. Stop! You're gonna get us sued. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe they're not all dead. Maybe they're just in a giant cage held by Ken Penders. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, at some point in that Knuckles series, he's gonna have to find traces of a long gone echidna tribe that's like oh this water monster though you got to look out for this guy right because like unless they're going to have to call come through when the fairy sprinkle legend of zelda shit these characters you know (laughs) the the uh chaos is apparently uh in part of the uh, the background in labyrinth zone like there is a mural and you can kind of see chaos whether or not that's Um. just a wink and a nod or if it's like we're we're putting in the seeds because i know we haven't gotten to the post credit scene because we haven't gotten to our own post credits but Ooh. considering the post credits it feels like we're not getting chaos in the third even though i really wanted san francisco to drown i know i've established this already like i want to see <laughs> that city underwater but they deserve it <laughs> see david I, I i don't think i don't think the ending the post credit scene discredits the idea of chaos I, I i think it even like uh it like uh uh, adds on to being chaos, like chaos. Like, I, I think it further confirms the idea of oh, mm. chaos is definitely a possibility. Right, I, mean, I feel like, like uh, we're just going there. Do we want to just get into it? <laughs> do we? I mean, we're still get into what the post credits. Well, we're saying we're not going, we're not there yet, but and then we're kind of getting into it. So, uh, like, do we right. want to get into I mean, it? If, if we're already in it, yeah. yeah Let me just make thinking. one point before right. we did it. Okay. Before we get into it. one point was when, at the end of the Labyrinth Zone, when Eggman got the emerald, and when he turned green, and when he started teleporting around, that was when I was like, all right, okay, okay. <laughs> so, right, have then... It. Yeah, I didn't like that very much. Robotnik, <laughs> well, I guess he's doing chaos control, right? Like, yeah, that's no, that's doing. exactly, that's oh. what I was like, that's when I was like, okay. oh, that solidifies why that we were going to see yeah. who we were going to see was as soon as Eggman turned green and started teleporting, he's like, oh. And he says yeah. chaos is power as it happens, and I was like, all right, I know what that is. Right. No, that was so cheesy. Right. Yeah, yeah. I will say, like, I I don't like the way maybe he acted during some of that, but that said, I do like the idea of Eggman getting a taste of the Master Emerald power for his own body and being like, holy shit, instead of it just purely being, I'm going to power my robot with that because I guess I can. I think him getting that taste of it through his own mind and soul is perhaps a better kind of... Right, book. it could be I, like I think I do like that. Right, yes, oh, yeah. Especially because it, it, and and his vocal performance sounds very Mike Paul. I, I don't know if it's the reverb that they're adding on it, but that it sounds the most like, but like kind of like at the very end of the first movie, it's like there's a lot of like <laughs> Mike Paulicisms in that like, when he's when he's like going all out uh, in the Death Egg robot. Which is also like yeah, like the having the, 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 there's a there's a there's a giant Sonic Three Death Egg robot in in this movie that they find and that, that that's really cool and and he even does the nose he even does the nose laser thing. Do- oh, oh, the nose laser, right? And also the, the the mustache squash. Like I I was amused by that. Like oh, that's that so, was good. That's so obvious, <laughs> and yet no one's ever done it. But it's right it's in there. The it's right there. Um, and and the Genesis manual, yeah. Ah, Gen- oh, that one was good. Yeah, that the the whole sequence I think was good, although. The one thing, if I want to nitpick, is how in the world did Gunn get there so fast? They were in Hawaii. How did you get to Montana? Like, it, was, it was also still the middle of the day. Right, like, they get there super quick. Like, like Robotnik warps from an island to Green Hills. Gunn shouldn't be there. There's no way they got there that quick. But I guess Gun they was did. probably on Hawaii and in Green Hills at the same time. But the general goes from Hawaii to Green Hill. Like the general there. has rings, and Tom bro. and Maddie, they all move. They didn't use. We didn't see them use the rings because as for, no, they they, yeah. they 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 use they use the plane. Yeah, because we, we, we see them land. 
Yeah, we see him land on the chopper. Well, we also don't see anyone feed the dog for the whole movie, but we all assume the dog's still alive, so... <laughs> oh, man. I would hope that Wade went to Tom's house. It's like, huh, I wonder what happened here. Ha, <laughs> Sonic. He's Whoa, so wild. He threw a rager here, huh? <laughs> hey, dog. Oh. Why, well, doggy? Right. Uh, and then... <laughs> What's the dog doing? Oh, I was, in, I, I was sent... Well, wait. I mean, but Tails is with Sonic. He's not with... Unless Tails gave them rings ahead of time? Well, no, because since we see them on the choppers, like they, oh, they right. couldn't Tails have used rings. With, right. Okay. Okay. So I was yeah. right. So Tails could have been the one who helped them out and and sent them over. Never mind. That's a, that's what I've been informed. That I mean, that's an easy plot hole to fix. Then that's good. Did Did you? Yeah, guys... no, what we, we, we know is that we know is that yeah. Tail Tails went and like got got the got 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 the plane and went after Sonic while Tom and Maddie went with the gun commander mm-hmm. to go to Green Hills. Like that 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 was where they went. Could be it was because they saw they like uh like Wade called up. Uh, the, the way they, when he rested uh, Stone, he called up being like, oh, th- this guy's here, and so all of Gun was able to mobilize, so they right. were like, oh, okay, we found Eggman's base, let's go over there, and then yeah, Tails went to go save Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So did you guys love it, or did you guys love it when the movie turned into Sonic Heroes? Yes! <laughs> when, when, you, when, you, when, you have, when you have your Avengers <sighs> style like camera turn around as the three of them are fighting on the rubble, and it's like, ah, it's, it's just so cool. It's, it's, so, it's just so good seeing has, all of them right. just fighting together. Has anyone has anyone, com- has anyone made a tweet and like, I can't believe they gave Tails a gun? Because he's got a gun <laughs> in this movie. Uh, I, have a, I have a note here that I wrote down, which I think is very important. That note yeah. is, Rachel could have murdered everyone because at one point she gets Tails' gun, aims it at the gun commander, and instead shoots her cake. She could have killed him. She could have killed everyone because Tails has a super powerful gun in his backpack, which I'll also mention, why isn't there a backpack playset thing? Like, I want to go to the store and buy a tiny backpack full of Tails' gadgets and just have it there. Like, I want a gun. Like I want to play with the gun. I want to play with the boomerang. I want oh, to yeah. play with like, the little tails electric. The Miles electric. He has Miles electric. That's another. He has Miles electric. He has the every Miles- kid would want cool. that. Yeah. Right. Like, why isn't that a toy right now? Like, if if I was a kid, I would want that right now, and I would wear that backpack all the time and go, "Oh, guys, I'm tails." <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm only sad that they paid off the guy who was floating away with Tails' gravity gadget. I kind of just wanted that one to be one of the plot holes this movie doesn't fill oh, in. Oh, right. Thank you. he falls back later. Right. I saw him and I'm like, oh, she just murdered a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, is he going to come down? I don't know. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. It, it is like, okay, I I know that maybe the pacing's a little odd and I think it's because they, they need like 10 more minutes of stuff with Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles to really uh, fix, you know, uh, to, to, to do little things, but you know, the, the the wedding scene, the stuff with Maddie and Rachel, like, I'm glad they gave them something to do, because in the first film, Maddie did nothing except buy two cakes at the beginning of the film. Uh, and that's I, all she needed to do, all, David. She bought a cake, <laughs> she bought another cake, I hope they ate both cakes. Um, I also, you know what, I like the fact that they never go back to Tom's house, to, to the Wachowski house, because... yeah. Like it's destroyed, <laughs> yeah. and they're not getting, they're not even getting a, a an Olive Garden gift card this time around. Like they have to deal with it. <laughs> what will they do? <laughs> oh man! Uh, I mean, like in in the first movie, the dining room gets destroyed, and you, we see Maddie and Tom repainting it at the end, but mm. they're not repainting that house oh. this time. Yeah, they're off busy getting sprinkles on their ice cream. Right, they uh, they uh, I enjoy. Okay, so, right, man, we've talked about so much. I forget. Did we talk about the fact? We did talk about the fact, right? That the that the wedding doesn't make sense. Okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, I love the wedding though. I do. I like the fact that I just, I just, I, I enjoy. They have two cages. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is funny. <laughs> who, who else were they planning to capture? <laughs> I guess they would have known about tails. I, I mean, it's a little sad that Tom's ringtone is. Uh, I mean, it's good that it's Green Hill Zone, yes, mm-hmm. but isn't it a little sad that all he had was an eight-second version of Green <laughs> Hill Zone? Version. He so just had the trial. To, 
<laughs> to me, it was like, why does he not have a longer version of Green Hill Zone? <laughs> well, in, in, the, in the context of the Sonic movie universe, is the Green Hill Zone just theme something that like apple made randomly yeah i was gonna make this yep, i was gonna say yeah. the same thing right that's really? the awkward thing about these movies being so pop culture referential is like okay so we're in a world where the sonic games don't exist but everything else does okay cool right oh man <laughs> i mean you you you, 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 can, you you can you can you can say that issue with like pretty much any like big franchise like, is it always has that thing of like, oh, like they'll like like when like I, I always think of like with with uh with uh, the like Marvel stuff where it's like oh like they'll make rep- pop culture references to like all famous movies and like reference specific <laughs> actors, but like some of those actors will be in those movies and it's like wait a minute, and it's like when the movies are like oh but that has this person in it, and it's like wait uh, uh that doesn't mm-hmm. make any well, sense, <sighs> and it's like yeah like wait, 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 whenever these movies like they they'll reference yeah they reference like Fast and Furious a bunch of times oh yeah and I'm always like haha it's because yes. it's the Fast and Furious producer they they did it in here it's like, right yeah. the the vin diesel versus the rock but i mean this movie even reference makes a reference to sonic's voice actor because he does the worst bit he says the yeah wor- the john ralphio thing yeah and it's like oh it's because sonic's voice actor is the same actor in parks right you know he did the thing and it's like oh he did the thing that's fine and it's like yeah man does, does Sonic ever think about the fact that his voice sounds like that guy? Does it sounds like Ben Schwartz? Does he does he go, hey, Tom, why do I sound like Ben Schwartz? Tom's like, well, you know, when a man and a woman are like, that has nothing to do with the question I just asked. He's like, look, I only have one speech here, and I don't even know if you're really supposed to be my son or not. Also, in the book, it does have Tom wonder if he's meant to be <laughs> Sonic's father figure in the beginning. Like, it does establish that a bit more. Uh... Also, the book does not have the post credit scene. So, uh, lame. What is, is this? Just... Uh, uh, what's happening? Are you hurt? Maddie asked. I'm fine, Sonic said, totally not fine. Okay, good, Tom exhaled, and then sucked in a breath to scream out, because you were so grounded, no scream time for a year, for ten years. Oh, that's like a father thing to do. Sonic gets grounded in the book? What? Yeah, in the <laughs> book, he gets grounded when he shows up in Hawaii. He's uh... like, Oh, mm. you'll be happy to know that in the book, when they say gun, they do use periods between each letter. So they say G-U-N. You're right. Because it says G dot, U dot, N dot. All right. I represent, my name is Commander Walters, and I represent the Guardian Units of Nations, a global task force created after the incident in San Francisco. Man, he flashed a badge with a spiked G at its center. He didn't do that in the movie. Wow. Oh, there we go. After the incidents in San Francisco. So that answers your question about why they don't like Robotnik. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Ha! The mm. book mm. answered my question, but the movie did not. Because as we know, there are three distinct Sonic movie universes. But, but, but <sighs> in, in, in the movie, don't, yeah, the, I'm pretty sure they, they, they say that, oh, like they, 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 like, they, they formed Gun like, because of the events of the last movie. And like, oh, like, it's, uh, mostly specifically like the tr- to track down Sonic. I think that was like their main reason. Right. Even though uh, they don't... We, we formed this whole organization. Right. Even though they don't need to track down Sonic. They know where he is. He's right there in Green Hills. <laughs> which is still <laughs> population... 1981 like that's instead of 91 i know see i really wish that in the first movie the population was 1990 and at the end sonic spray paints over the zero and adds a one <sighs> yeah. yeah can i go mm-hmm. back David, in time and, and suggest this jeff fowler <laughs> call me i once met you but i didn't give you any contact information <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i do like the idea that jeff fowler is an hour plus into this video he's like oh, i remember that guy i'm here listening to this for some reason when i could just be working and doing anything else with my life that's right yeah oh man <laughs> right because jeff fowler worked on the cutscenes in sonic 06 so he 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 saw the toe tap and went i'm gonna steal that the steal the thing i worked on for the other thing i'm working on mm. oh man look okay. i'm just here. waiting for when the sonic franchise crosses over with the fast and furious franchise like because I, I want to see I want to see Vin Diesel look at Sonic and say you've got a family and now now we we yeah, you've we're gonna, got a family like we're all family <laughs> and then and then Sonic it's then about family Vin Diesel jumps on Sonic and they run really fast together and Vin Diesel pretends <laughs> that Sonic is his car Vin Diesel has his arms out behind him also <laughs> does does Sonic call Vin Diesel dad he's just wrapped really tightly oh man <laughs> oh it's Uncle Vin Diesel. 
<laughs> Uncle Dom. I'm waiting. Okay, because because like, oh, there's so many things in this movie. I think I actually like this movie more than I realized. Uh, wow. Oh well, before it's before fun. we really dive into the post credit scene, I want to ask a question to everyone, and that is, how many McDonald's toys do you currently have? Zero. Zero. What? None. I have three. Well, hold on. <laughs> Are we counting the uh, the one like the the electronic game ones? With, like, no, no. Games? I'm talking about the the current run. <laughs> the the oh the new one. No, none. None. Just go to McDonald's. How hard is it? It's right there. <laughs> I've been to McDonald's. I just don't order. I that. don't want them. I don't. I've I've seen all those toys, and I don't want a single one. Well, no, David. Well, what you we want to ask you, David. We want to ask you a question. Okay. We want to ask you a question uh-huh. now. <laughs> Do you like McDonald's? Uh, occasionally, um, when when I when I was cleaning, if you remember, I used to clean, and I almost got fired during my first uh, <laughs> go through here. Uh, I used to eat McDonald's all the time because I was so tired and was like, I just need to eat food. And I would go to McDonald's and I would go to Taco Bell. And that consisted of my diet for like two years, which you shouldn't do ever. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, Don't ever do that. But like, I still enjoy McDonald's from time to time. Like we went and I got a happy meal and it came with a milk. I got a milk. Don't get, if you get the chocolate (laughs) milk, the chocolate milk doesn't have Sonic on it. The only the white milk has Sonic or tails on it. What are we doing? (laughs) (laughs) What's happening? <laughs> we are rapidly approaching being as long as the movie again. But you see, if you, uh, if you get the apple slices, it come. Yeah. The, the package has knuckles the on cum? it. Right. So, so you get the, the happy meal box. Are red. You, get, you get the happy meal box. So, David, to answer your question, uh, which character is going to floss in Sonic 3? It's very clearly going to be Maria. That's oh, the final so. answer. Oh, oh God. man. No. See, because Sonic... Officer <laughs> uh, Commander Walters will be going through the arc as a kid. He'll be like, Maria, I've invented a new <laughs> dance. And she'll be like, let me hear it, Jonathan Walters. And he starts <laughs> doing it. My and then cousin. she gets shot. And he's like, Maria died while she was flossing for me. You let her die, Shadow. <laughs> for all the people on that planet, I'll make them floss. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll go to the ark and they'll fire the floss laser, which makes people oh, spontaneously floss Maria. until it stops. Oh my god, Chris, you need to write this movie. <laughs> do, you, do you think there'll be a scene where Walters is like looking in the mirror and he takes out because he only has one contact lens and he takes it out and then we see that his eyes are different colors? God, oh, that yeah. should have been the post credit for this movie. Oh. He's like looking. He opens up his vest and it's like a Chili's gift card instead. He's like, they have no idea. And then he takes it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I am very. Okay, we were in the theater. Okay, we were in a theater that was very empty. Uh, that that was because the, there was a 6 o'clock showing and there was a 6.30 showing. And we got the 6.30 showing. It was very empty. The 6 o'clock showing, I guess, was full of ruffians. But... Ooh. But the six thirty showing was very was very uh, cool. We we sat we we sat in the back and we got very excited at all the Sonic th- scenes. But at the very end, with the post credit scene, because okay, look, I had a feeling that Shadow was going to be the post credits character. You know that we were just going straight to Shadow, and it makes sense from from a you know like a, oh who are the popular Sonic characters? You got Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Shadow. Like it makes sense. It's clear. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, but 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 like when they started talking about fifty years ago, like the 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 yelping starts and the leg movements. It's start. like a sonic dog whistle, right? Like, oh, that's it. <laughs> because there was the assumption: oh, if they're going to do Shadow, they're going to put it in the con- the context of movies one and two happen, then Shadow is made. Because yeah, like that makes sense. It's like a Hollywood thing. Why would you care about Shadow's backstory? Shadow's going yeah. to be a clone, either made yeah. by Robotnik or Gun or whatever, and and it's like, oh, here he's a he's going to be something that would fight Sonic in case Sonic goes out of his mind, you know? Yeah, that that, that was what that was what that was what I thought right. was that but, was going to happen. But mm-hmm. but then but then they said fifty years ago, and and command and then and then and then General Walters, the Gun Commander, just went oh, Project Shadow, and it was like, oh oh, they're they're doing and it, and then they cut to, and then they cut to it, and then they cut to Shadow, and he opens his eyes. It's like, oh, all right. They, we we see Shadow, who is sporting a very nice belt that I guess keeps him in his tube that he's currently in. <laughs> um, and and yeah, it's like, oh wait, they're not just going to do a version of Shadow. It sounds like they want to do actual 
shadow. And that opens up all the doors, because if you're doing 50 years ago, are you going to have Maria? Are you going to have Gerald? Are you going to have the Space Colony arc? Like, Hmm. The, the, the Speaking of the theater uh, presence, though, I do want to give a shout out to the theater I went to, which was filled with a lot of adults and kids, some dressed like Sonic. And let me tell you, the theater reaction as that was happening, kids were freaking out. And it was just like this weird magic I've only ever read about online. <laughs> like Kids today still like Sonic and like the kids were like explaining the war to their parents. And I'm like, that game is like <laughs> twice as old as you. How do you what? It is very That's magical. Great. Right. But yes, yes, it, it raises a lot of questions, such as, will these movies show a girl getting shot in the back? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like you may as well just get into it, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know who you cast as Eggman's grandpa and cousin oh. for Jim Carrey, but, you uh, know. Y- uh, Danny DeVito should be Danny Gerald. Danny DeVito? Okay. At this point. Like, he gets killed by Firing Squad. Very popular. Well, <laughs> no, no, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Well, then he's like, I started blasting, and then he gets blasted. I started bl- <laughs> who, who do we cast as Gerald? Mike Pollock. Oh, oh there we go. Mike Mike Pollock would be an interesting. Yeah. Oh, go on. Oh, no, it was. Um, uh, it was. I, th- I think it was Derek who said where it's like because it was the whole thing of like Jim Carrey saying like, oh, he isn't sure if he wants to like keep doing uh, acting or something. So they're being like, oh, like we don't know if Eggman's gonna actually been be in the third one or not. And they'd be they'd be like, oh, like who would you like? What would you like replace Eggman with? And then it was Derek. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, but no, no, Derek, Derek said, uh, an egg robo voiced by Mike Pollock, and I'm like, yes, like, have Stone build an egg robo, and it's voiced by Mike Pollock, and Aww. that, 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 that's what, I, I think that would, like, if, if you can't get, a uh, carry back for a third one, do that, I think that would be amazing. But, I would, what's weird about that, though, is that Stone isn't a super genius. He's got the technology, though. Can he build a robot? Unless it's a robot that Robotnik built, and it's like, oh, in the case of my death, I have made a yeah, robot. Or that, yeah. which we'll oh, talk. God. He's going to Rick and Morty. I made it. a robot me and a robot Sonic. Go deploy them both. Yeah. It has my robo soul. I'm, I'm going to say right now, I really hope, like, I want Jim Carrey to come back as Robotnik, because if the alternative is no Robotnik, like, I, I don't want them to, to deal with the Robotnik family tree if Robotnik is not there. Uh, yeah. Razor Jin. I think he should be in at least. Like they should. I feel like he would like be like, okay, I'll do one more, and like they'll be like, oh, if, if he is gonna do, if he's gonna retire, like at least like like do one more, and like I feel like he would like he they, he would like go for it if they like give him something that he likes. So I it's like yeah, at least for a third one, he should yeah. be in. I feel like him saying I'm gonna retire must be just I want money because before. Mm-hmm the second movie came out he, there were news reports that he was like oh i i want to make ace ventura 3 because the guys who were writing the sonic movie would write it and i'm into that idea so if he's into the into making a sequel to a franchise that he wrote off why is he suddenly well actually i, I don't want to act at all i'm done did you hear the update to that david no he only wants to do it if a genius like christopher nolan directs ace ventura 3 oh he said that in the last yeah, few weeks yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> carrie is very he's, out yeah. there he's an like, i think he has fried his mind is what i think oh from yeah, all yeah, those so, so, yes yeah, so that's what <laughs> yeah so, so that's why i'm like yeah he's very out there so <laughs> for him to be like yeah i, I kind of I kind of wanted to avoid i uh he, for him to just out of nowhere to be like yeah i kind of don't want to act anymore and then just be like that i was like yeah it kind of it, it does yeah. kind of make sense uh, so, like, yeah. jim in his all of his interviews he talks about this ugh, i hate this documentary so much it's called the secret and the whole point of the documentary is just a bunch of people saying I believed that this one thing would happen, and then my belief manifested it into reality. And he believes that to be true. And he, uh, mm-hmm. after he said all that in his interviews, I was like, I can't stand him. And then I'm watching the movie, and then when Robotnik says, "Have you seen the movie The Secret?" It blew my mind. I was, <laughs> oh, I, I no. audibly said, "Oh no." Is that like a law of attraction thing? Is that what it's that is? The, yeah. Yep, it's the law of attraction bullshit. Oh, I hate it. <sighs> yeah, Jim. I I don't hmm. know. He's funny. He's a good guy, but I you know when you when you spread stuff like that, like it, it's it's dangerous in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. getting people instead of having people you know go towards their goals, they just oh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wish for it. Well, if you just like, want it bad enough, Stephen. <laughs> right. If you, the only truth to that is if you want it bad enough that you will be motivated to make it happen. That's the only truth in that statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Like anyway, a lot sorry, of belief systems, it, it can lead to good things, but isn't inherently, yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry to tangent. What were we talking about? That's why Shadow should kill Eggman. Oh. <laughs> uh, and and, and da- David, the reason why I think it would there was there will still be chaos is because uh-huh. I don't think they're gonna be like oh Shadow and then also like oh they'll have like a bio lizard thing. I was like I think there there's still gonna be a monster that like Sonic and Shadow team up to fight, and I think that monster will be chaos because I think it's like oh like combine SA one and SA two together, and it's like oh because uh, at the end of the movie it's like oh they repair the Master Emerald, but it's like when Sonic like gets rid of the game well first off when when he becomes supersonic and then for a very split second you're thinking oh shit are they gonna go full fleet way and then it's like nope it's just oh sonic's just mm-hmm. fine he's not mm-hmm. evil and then he like lets the chaos emeralds go but it's like he lets them go up into the sky but then knuckles like repairs the master emerald so i'm like okay so now are the chaos emeralds like separate to the master emerald because they they completely like kind of gloss over that they just kind of say oh sonic got rid of the chaos emeralds so it's like oh if if, are, if the chaos emeralds are out there on earth or in the universe it's like oh the mm. third movie will be like a race to like between sonic and shadow maybe metal sonic or something else and being like oh they're everybody's trying to get the chaos emeralds and then like maybe you can also if you were to give knuckles something to do oh you can throw in rouge showing up trying to steal the master emerald and it's like a chase between them two and it's like oh you get knuckles gets a love interest while also getting something to do in the movie where you probably won't have like much to do because you have to focus so much on your time on shadow and then mm. yeah the monster will probably be like oh chaos emerges and destroys san francisco or wherever and then uh, that, that yeah. that's the thing that they destroy <laughs> to circle back tyson did say on retro he posts a lot of, on retro for some reason but he did say that basically the chaos emerald spread out dragon ball style kind of like in the games i guess if you think about it yeah and yeah. that the master emerald is basically now functioning the way it does in the games oh. where it doesn't inherently have the chaos emerald powers but it does kind of act as a Control? Uh, what? Yeah, kind of thing. The so it's basically now in the yeah. game status. Right. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like, like, yeah, Tails is going to use the Master Emerald power to create a Chaos Emerald radar, mm-hmm. and they're going to go on an adventure to collect them all. Right. I think they'll do Chaos for a number of reasons. One being that they don't have to tackle their actually being a space station in space that has Eggman's face B, <laughs> it blows they up don't the moon. have to make a bio lizard, which is a huge disgusting lizard with open gashes and C, they don't have to shove the space station up the lizard's ass <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of reasons like that where they'll just go yeah, let's just go with chaos more people probably recognize chaos than the bio lizard at this point, right? For the young kids I guess. I don't know, he was in Sonic Forces it, 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 it was it was funny that uh that because we because we were discussing like oh would they do the death egg slash arc and we were like where well, they probably aren't because it's too similar to the death star but it's like we technically got the death egg robot here so it's like they did get death mm. egg in some way so right well i mean i think i think the arc is a little bit different visually from you know like the death egg is just the death star with eggman's face at least the arc is like half a thing the arc is half the death thing right it it looks different enough where you could squint your eyes and go "Eh, it's fine um yeah i I, I, I don't think they're gonna go i don't think they're gonna go go with the arc i think it's just gonna be like oh shadow is just somewhere on earth i don't know i uh, i just say i i want the arc though i think i do i like the arc The arc would be cool but i don't think they're gonna go i feel like they can just simplify especially because in this movie they simplify it to have because we were just assuming like the whole movie was gonna be about oh sonic and tails were gonna travel through like the different like worlds like with the rings but then it turns out that oh no everything is just all on earth it's like oh the master mm-hmm. emerald yeah. was just on earth like the whole time it so it's like all... eh, whatever i mean but it basically is like what in the game i mean everything's on earth in the games as well it's like yeah might as well right. it's fine man yes yeah so having shadow just be somewhere like in a secret lab on earth it's like yeah right. it's like whatever well I mean, well I mean technically he was on earth i mean he was on earth in like he was he was made on the ark but he was on earth in sa2 yeah. so yeah that is connect- mm-hmm. yeah yeah they, they, they very they, they they could clearly do they, they could easily do prison island uh right we could see prison island we could see it explode we could see more people die under the serious circumstances. We could go back there and radioactive sludge spills out everywhere and you go on weird little <laughs> floating helicopter spinny things. Oh yeah, that's how What's we find top, top secret, secret discs. discs? <laughs> Will they Ow. give us movie city escape? Can we get that? Oh, I mean, oh. like if if they go all in on SA2, it feels like if they don't have live and learn show up that, that they've done Ooh. something wrong. Uh... <laughs> It'll just be Sonic X. I'll stop you right there. They didn't have the crazy fucking saxophone from Ice Cap in the Ice Cap part of this movie, so my expectations are officially zero for Sonic music showing up. 
Right. True. They could have. They could have gotten the Jetsons' hard times. <laughs> no. Hard times, <sighs> happiest days of our lives. Hard times. I got a question for David. Yes. Uh, what about this quote? My inventions are how I discovered you. <laughs> oh, how it doesn't correlate with the comic at all. That is true. It doesn't. Um, now, now, okay. When does he say that in the movie? Let me look in the novel. When they're in the tavern, I think they're in the tavern. Okay, I think I don't remember. Because uh, I'm wondering. Okay, it's a map. I feel like... Tales oh, is... my memory's bad. Because um, Tails says that he found him from the baseball game, so that's another like callback to the first. Right, I'm just sure, like, is that something he says? Yeah, in the tavern, then. Um, yeah, in, 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 the, in the tavern is like it was after after the whole dance party, and they're like sitting relaxing, and then Tails explains that, oh yeah, like when when Sonic did when you did the when he did the EMP blast, I was able to locate you, and I basically basically he was watching him like through like through communication, right. I guess like through, so, through like satellite communications. So in the novel, Tails says. I hated being different, but then I heard about you, the fastest heard. creature in the galaxy. You were weird too, uh. but you were a legend, right? He just heard it. You inspired me, Sonic. Inspired me to leave my village and come here to help you in your mission. Um, hey, the comic is a part of this novelization. Ah, uh, see, I told you. There's you're you're actually right about that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I think that, yeah. all these changes were probably just executive muddling, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, especially because well, the, the comic and the novel were written by the same person, so... Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you want to hear how they describe the dance sequence? I'm sure you do. Oh, the dance sequence is in the novel? Uh, Sonic rushed to his new friend's side. Come on, pal. I've got a plan, but I need your help. You with me? Tails nodded his head. ho. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> apparently earlier uh, the crowd chants the word freaks over and over. No, that's fine. Um, Tails nodded his head slowly, then Sonic whispered the plan in his ear. Step one in executing his scheme saw Sonic quickly switching the jukebox to some real American dance grooves. We won't say what song. Doesn't even say? <laughs> Doesn't say? No. Sonic's grooves. Sonic took to the floor and pushed back the crowd with a wicked spin. And with enough space cleared, he was able to kick up every pop, lock, shuffle, and shake he'd learned from years spent along binging music videos in a cave. Sonic slid mm -hmm. his feet across the floor and went into another spin, twirling faster and faster until the crowd grew dizzy watching his hyper-fast moves. His quills even started to electrify as he turned into a pure tornado of dance. And then it was time for uh, Tails' part. After recording Sonic's sweet routine <laughs> with one of his holographic gadgets, Tails began uh, to project image after image of Sonic rocking out onto every corner of the bar. Before long, there was nowhere a person could look without seeing the spinning hedgehog. The motion was too much for the Siberians as one by one they fell to the ground. Several dove <laughs> towards the bathrooms to toss their cookies. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, vomit. That's an expression I haven't heard in a minute. <laughs> By the end of the song, only the map holder still stood, but his knees were weak. As the song reached its crescendo, the hedgehog did a somersault over the heads of his holographic counterparts and landed at the man's feet. With a simple blow from his lips, the exhausted bully finally collapsed. The map was theirs again, and so was the Pavanka. What does the... What is the Bravo. Book, what does the book say? Like, what, what started the whole dancing? Were they being challenged to dance, just like in the movie, or...? Um, let's see. Because Tails calls the dance battle because he doesn't know what the word means. We'll take... Okay, so it is them sitting uh, about... You know, they're, they're trying to order food. So that's still the same. Uh, they ask for the beef stew. Quirp, queep. His little device ran the common through and spat out some more rush, and this time it did not seem to do the trick. In fact, the waitress was highly offended by whatever the machine translated. Oh. Uh... Sonic couldn't tell what she was talking about, but his best guess was his best guess was how dare you insult my beloved grandmother, who said our mothers were three-legged goats. They also say, and and so it is like he wears an underwear made of salad. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like they're about to be thrown into the fire, but oh, everyone is surrounding them like we're gonna punch you in the face. I just looked up Siberian Conflict Resolution in my intergalactic glossary, and, uh-oh, I'm, oh, sorry, wrong voice. I just looked up Siberian <laughs> Conflict Resolution in my intergalactic glossary, and, uh-oh, Tails' face went slack. As a custom for solving disputes, it's, it's a dance battle. Oh. 
<laughs> so I mean, oh. you know, it's all right. There, it's still like, yeah, we're gonna dance, but there's no fire. Um, I mean, they're not thrown into the fire directly. That was a weird part of the movie, though. I mean, the the same beats are in this book, okay. from what I can tell. It's just that there are details that are different, like tales coming to the planet in the first place, and these books. It, yeah, it does feel like the the novelization ties more into what's established in the prequel comic than the movie itself. So, now if there was a music video for the prequel comic, I think that would be very good. Just slot that right in there. So the novelization also gets it wrong that Sonic could have just grabbed the Mac map because he's fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because because the kids like dance. I mean, have you ever seen um, what, what's that movie called where they dance, dance off, dance jump, jump just... dance? Let's dance. No, that's a, that's a game. Uh. You know? Chris, I gotta ask you, what was <laughs> no. a better what what was a better Uncharted movie? The Uncharted movie <laughs> or the five minutes of the Sonic Two movie? Well, that's a difficult question for me to answer, <laughs> but I can say that the Uncharted movie had the Barcelona and Papa John's fight scene, so I might have to give my favor to Uncharted here. All right, fair and, enough. Oh, and, 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 da- and David, uh, there there was the uh, he 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 references Step Up and Channing Tatum. Yes, step up. Oh, That's God. good. That's what it is. I couldn't, I couldn't, just couldn't yeah, come. Yeah, because yeah, 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 he says something along the lines of, oh, he's like, oh, oh, Chang Tatum makes this look so easy. <laughs> hmm. uh, so so the movie, right, so it starts with, with Eggman on the Mushroom Planet, and then he meets Knuckles, and it's always <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to save Seattle. <laughs> We're just going back. It doesn't work well. He has a heart-to-heart on, on a lake. Because I guess there's a lake in Green Hills. Then they go to Hawaii. He uses his ring. He uses one of his uh, finite Long number Claw of rings. says, never show yourself in front of anyone. Right. And then and then Long Claw's like, oh, I'm glad you're at Earth. Uh, wait. What, wait, right. wait, what summons you know, the in, map? In the first movie, she's just like, run. They want you. Run. Hop from planet to planet. Mm. In the second movie, she's like, I'm glad you're on Earth because that's where you need to be. And it's like, wait. If I hadn't met Tom and decided not to... Not to hide forever, I would be on a mushroom planet. I wouldn't be on Earth. Like, maybe you should have told True. me this earlier. That would have been helpful, Long Claw. And she's like, I'm your mother. And, like, yeah. <laughs> and then Long Claw would have been like, Go back. Yeah. Didn't yeah, Sonic are. try a bunch of different planets and then Earth was like the second to last one? There, there, there's a couple to? contradictions between movies one and two. And I think it's because movie one is. is stuck in that we have to make like a fully Hollywood thing and and number two is like we can embrace more Sonic because number two I I guess you could say Tyson has he is accredited as a co-producer he bumped right up Mm -hmm. and he's the Sonic guy he knows Sonic I've seen him what triggered the map to to start doing its little hologram thing? oh well was it just convenience? Uh, in the movie, yes, convenience. But in this, <laughs> they describe it like he holds it up to the moonlight in the book. Oh. Yeah. So he never held it up to the moonlight ever before that? Uh, I guess not. Um, uh, I always just thought this map was of places I could hide and other weird things I didn't understand at all, Sonic said. Oh, it's more than that! Tails leaned in close to examine some shimmering ancient writing along the map's edge. Watch this! Hold it up to the moonlight! Tails and Sonic lifted the map up to the window, and as the beams of moonlight shone through, they amplified the writing. It was as if they were charging ancient electrical circuits embedded in the paper, and the circuits in turn projected the shape of a familiar owl into the air above their heads. So, uh, there you go. Yeah, like the book goes, oh, you have to do a thing. In the movie, it's just, Sonic, hold it, and this time it'll do a thing, even though it's never done this before for you. Remember when you played ping pong by yourself on the hilltop sign? That was a reference? Well, now it, it it's going to do more. Okay, David, I, I checked. Uh, Tyson, uh, looking uh, on IMDb, Tyson Hess isn't credited as a co-producer. He's just credited as lead designer and storyboard supervisor. But you know who is credited as an associate producer? Uh-huh. Aaron Weber. That's interesting. What? Although, like, that's IMDb though. That's the Wikipedia. Right, of... but I mean, like in the movie, watching the end credits, it says co-producer Tyson has his Twitter. Like, it's right bio there. Also. Yeah, like it. It just hasn't been updated. But he's definitely credited as a co-producer in the credits. That's even before the long scroll. It's when it's still all sprite art. Cool. It says it, and I was like, whoa, he. 
he must have gotten a nice paycheck this time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> if he didn't, awkward. Yes. Uh-oh. But but yeah, Aaron Weber is marked as an associate producer as well, which is interesting. Uh, what did he do? Yeah, I have no, I have no, uh, associate producer is like a weird thing because that pretty much just me, like the associate producer is literally like a producer that like, the, 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 it usually is uh, for people who barely did anything, but did something that like, oh, like you, you helped this movie get made in some way. But I'm like, yeah, I have no idea what, what especially because this movie was started like long after Weber left. So it's like, I don't know what, what he would have done. <laughs> Like, 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 if if he still had his like original position, like that he had like several years ago, that would have made more sense. But he hasn't had that for like three years. Like they and they started production on this movie last year, so it's like, yeah, it's it's a weird thing that that he that uh, he had some involvement, especially because I like, I've never I did literally haven't heard anybody mention his involvement in this at all until this moment. So all right. well, uh, if if this movie was like if the production of it started very quickly after the first, was he still involved in the? Sonic Office. Did he I don't leave know. in like 2019 ish? Uh, I don't. I don't remember exactly. But... Uh, well, uh, because I am who I am, I wrote a bunch of notes for things that I was w- hoping to come across, and there's like half of them we haven't even touched yet. Sweet. Ooh, let's go let's down go the list. Them. But, <laughs> but. They're mostly just categorized into things that I liked and things I didn't like and things that I thought were weird and miscellaneous. Um, but before I get into that, uh, we haven't really touched on what what we think about the echidnas created the Master Emerald. And because we were talking about chaos earlier, I was, I was thinking like, well, if chaos is going to show up, it, it'll have to have a different sort of origin, right? Yes. Um, yeah, because we saw the Master Emerald break. And out came the seven chaos emeralds, and then Knuckles did reform it. Um, Knuckles does do a lot of emeralds. He also punches Robotnik. He punches the emerald out yeah. of Robotnik, which is yes, I love that. That was such a good moment. I was like, oh, he did the thing. He did the thing from Sonic Three. <laughs> it's very. It all works. Um, but yeah, since since the Master Emerald has been reformed, even if it is now playing the role that it does in the games. Chaos and Tikal can't be in there. It's already broken apart. It's not like there was a moment where there's the seven emeralds at, at Sonic's feet, and then Chaos, like Tikal, shows up and is like, "Hi, Tom. It's me, Tikal." And and Tom's like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "Uh, not nothing. I'll be here later in a sequel." It flies away. Like we don't get that. Hmm. So, um, I mean, I guess there's still ways. I didn't even could, think about that. I guess you could have like Chaos and Tikal sealed in something else. You know, like maybe maybe the echidna that we saw in the flashback was Pachacamac or Pachacamac, and he he was the one that got the emerald punched out of him. And Tikal had to do a thing because she's like, "I'm actually on the owl side because you're crazy, Dad." I, I'm, but I, it still wouldn't be. Hmm. I'm in the Master Emerald. There there are ways that you could do it, whether it be like somehow infusing it into the story of SA two and three, or even as like here's the fourth movie because. Man, they could they could make four of these. They can make more of these. They can make a lot of these. A lot of movies. They, pl- they plan on making and more. And they will. Mm-hmm. I guess it really just depends on how what the box office is for the third movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, we know. Well, I mean, we know the the second movie uh, has it's the highest grossing uh, opening weekend for any video game movie. So that's something. Any video game adaptation. Yeah. Uh. So I, I don't know what the box office is for things like, say, Wreck-It Ralph or... Uh, I, I, well, I, I, I think, I, if I remember correctly, I think it's it's on par. I forget which one did more, but I think Sonic 2's opening weekend was about the same as Wreck-It Ralph. It was, like, very That's close. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, like, very... Because I think this one was, like, is like 75 million, 80 million. I think that was around what Wreck-It Ralph's opening weekend was. So it's, like, yeah, they, they it was... it's It did very well, and it's, like, I know... Because Paramount's doing their thing, like, oh, like, they're only having the movies uh, in theaters for, like, I think 45 days, and then it's going to be on Paramount+, Plus, and then it gets Blu-ray, like, uh, a few yeah. weeks later. Mm. Yeah, so I imagine, like, once it gets on Paramount+, Plus, like, that and the, the first and second movie are both going to go on together, so I imagine, like, oh, depending on how many views, like, that gets on there, and it's like, oh, that, that'll probably, like, also add, like, more to their being, like, oh, this is really successful, and then, yeah, since we, they're the Knuckles series, and then the third one, which is already confirmed, it's like, I feel like those are probably going to to do very well too sonic beat morbius saw it sonic sweep sonic... 
Sonic oh, yeah. made right. Sonic made seven more billion dollars. That's right. Not to date this, but but do you think Sonic will will beat the the next Fantastic Beasts movie? Maybe, maybe. Uh, at, at, at this rate, probably. I'm thinking. <laughs> Or at least, like, they'll probably be about the same. But considering Sonic costs significantly cheaper to make than that movie, like, but Sonic's going to win technically overall. It is April 14th. Has that come out yet? Uh, I think this week. Well, today is April 14th. Um, I mean... No, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Oh, oh, right. It comes out this weekend. I, I think t- tonight would have been previews. Yeah. Oh. All right. So, uh, April 15th. Well, I don't plan to see it. No. <laughs> I haven't seen any. Um, I, I've only seen. I saw the first two, and the second one was very bad. It was very bad. Oh, Stefan said it's bad. Oh, That's how you know. I've, I've only. <laughs> oh, damn it. I've only seen four Harry Potter movies. I saw one, two, and three, and then I saw seven, part one. How many Sonic movies have you seen? I've seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Even the ones that don't exist. That's right, because I I read the the Wonders of the World scans, and I went, man, you could have made this a movie. And then I watched the Sonic Armageddon pitch, and I went, man, they could have made this a movie. <laughs> um, I think it's weird that Robotnik in this movie, his motivation is just to become darkness itself. Like, it's weird. Like He wants to, he wants to be pure evil. Yeah, he didn't want to make an Eggman land. It's, like, it's very... It is kind of weird. It's cartoony. It's, I don't know, it's, it's more cartoony than, than game Eggman, in my opinion. True. Well, it, at least when he's like super powerful he says he wants everyone to be his machine so i was like okay i guess it's like the this the similarity to uh putting every all of the critters into robots Mm -hmm. he said it was on his vision board Mm -hmm. especially because the first his first scene in the first movie is talking about how much he hates people and how much he likes robots because robots like listen to exactly what you want to do like they they follow your programming exactly so it's like yeah the fact they want yeah him that and then, like, yeah, robotic, like, quote unquote, roboticizing, like, everything. It's like, yeah, no, that makes that that fits, uh, Eggman. I guess. Mm. Yeah. I wish they would have reminded us a bit more. Is yeah. maybe where that felt weird to me. Yeah. I think the most is like with him, with how he's manipulating Knuckles and like being like, oh, it's like, oh, Knuckles thinks that we're allies, but like I clearly am like, oh, I'm only using him. I think he, I think he sucks. And then when once when when Knuckles has his all, I thought, why well, thought we were friends? And he's like, no, friends suck. Right. He's like, friends suck, but 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 Asian Stone, that's a keeper. It's true love. Well, Want to give him a kiss? Asian Stone and Robotnik is just Burns and Smithers. It, it's literally just that. It's just oh, he 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 respects that that Stone is so devoted to him, but he doesn't actually give a shit about him. And Stone is just the hopeless romantic, just like Smithers. It's it's literally just that. It's the exact same dynamic. Oh man, I can't wait till they have a kiss. <laughs> but it might be a kiss that they would have. You know, they could easily remove for for certain international markets. <sighs> Do, do you wait? Do do you think uh, in in the third one, if it is like yeah, chaos or whatever? Do you do you think the third one is when they'll go? Oh, Eggman teams up with Sonic to defeat the greater evil. You think they're gonna do that? Uh, I don't think th- this Eggman is so evil though. I don't think he would do that. Yeah, it's a little weird. I I think the only way he would do it is if it's also clear that he's trying. He's just using Sonic like. Like yeah, here, because he goes like, oh, I'm with Knuckles, and he tries to pal around with him, and then tells Agent Stone, oh, yeah, like, you know, this guy, we're gonna, I'm gonna throw him out the moment I can, don't worry about it. So True. if he's like, oh, I might have to work with Sonic, it's gonna be in such a way that immediately he'll try to betray him, as opposed to the actual end of SA2, where he just stares out into space, and he's <laughs> like, oh, man, what was my grandfather? They just hang out with the, <laughs> just hang the out. criminal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, right. I, I would feel it'd be like exact. It would be like the like with, with, with what they did with the metal virus. It's like yo, they're reluctantly working together to solve the problem, but like Eggman's like basically saying, "I'm gonna betray you the moment I hit the chance." Hmm. Right. If they do do it, I hope it's that way. That way, he is the actual end threat still, and not just the monster like the games fell into for a while. Yeah, although I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if again the third movie does make the end threat like yeah, just have like who have like have the monster be the final boss, especially because I mean Sonic fans nowadays are tired because because they're Sonic fans and everything is a goddamn circle. Now they're tired of Eggman final boss and they want the monster of the weeks back. 
So the people would be happy to see like chaos as the final boss and Eggman as just kind of like the random threat on in, on the side. Um, so I have some uh, things I can start going down. Do we want to start wrapping up or are there any other thoughts from anyone else? Uh, well, you could go down the list and I'm sure we'll interrupt you. Yeah, no, I think that's great. <laughs> um, Hell so yeah. I can, <clears throat> uh, I guess I can go through my, my section that says that was weird. Yes. Uh, we already covered the the dog is just sitting in a destroyed house for days. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Rachel's wedding ring doesn't have a stone in it. She was all excited about it. Oh, the wedding ring. Okay, look, I found it weird. Okay, so so it's like Tom Tom does a bit because I guess he's an amateur magician, which we learn about in this movie. Where he's like, oh, yeah. the, the rings in your ear. Ha 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 ha. I'm not, you know, trying to scar you or anything, small child. Um, but he accidentally swaps the rings. Now, when he, when he tries to throw the ring to save Sonic, he goes, oh no, it's, it's the actual writing ring. He looks at it. You can see the inscription on the inside, right? Yeah. So when he runs up and just starts shouting at everyone. To he should have just showed them the ring. Right. Like, he's look, like, look, this... I switched them up. Sorry. Can I have that back? Right. He could be like, <laughs> well, that's my ring. I accidentally gave you my ring. This is your ring. You see the words? Okay. Goodbye. And then run to the, into a corner and do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he's like, "No, I'm gonna punch this guy." I'm a right, cop. He punches him. <laughs> that it. Uh, he he punched him. He punched him, even yeah. though he could have said. Yeah, I feel like the, that that's like that that whole like scene would have been far more cringy if the if the the whole gun reveal didn't happen. Like the fact that the gun reveal happened made it more like okay, yeah, they they, they deserved it rather than like oh if they, if, it, if that didn't mm. happen then yeah like, Tom would have just been an idiot. Yeah. Right, I, he still kind of was, but it worked yeah. out. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's fine. I swear. <sighs> like I deserve to be punched. It was a fine. And my next section is, uh, no, we're done with that. Was weird. This is that was dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we already talked about Sonic almost gets thrown into a fire. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was incredibly dark when <laughs> when Sonic. Maddie and Tom were all just sitting there waiting to be stomped on. The inevitable death. Oh. It was, and they were just like all sad and we're like, we're you know, like, no, we're going to, we're going to stay together even through, the, even through this. It's, it's like, like the, ah. fur, it's like the furnace scene from Toy Story 3. Yeah. I was about to say again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That was good. I, I, I like that. Right. Yeah, and in and, 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 and the darkest moment is when the Chaos Emeralds uh, show themselves and Super and Supersonic saves the day. Do you it's think like, oh, love activated them? Probably. Oh, at, at least like like a po- positive like like those like those like sincere positive like feelings like the emotions like that that was what activated them. So yeah, again, yeah. love technically love. Mm-hmm. Chaos is power. Power enriched by the heart. By the heart. <laughs> that's, ah! that's what you call sis. And this is in the miscellaneous uh, Sonic calls Tails Miles Tails Prower at, during the baseball scene at the end. So very, very. That's his end. official his official name. Right. I guess he still. I guess he told him his real name off camera. Yeah, off camera. <laughs> uh, and then I have my section of what I liked. Um, <laughs> this one's a little random, but uh, when Sonic's doing his little uh, vigilanteism. Uh, he's asked, why don't you let the police handle this? And he says, because that's not what heroes do. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's even though right. his father is is a police officer. He's Shh, like... It's fine, it's I, fine. He's, like, I he's don't, a sheriff. He's like, he's, a, seen, he's a sheriff, it's fine. Right, he's like, I've seen it. Like, there's this guy named Wade. I don't think Tom has ever shot anyone, all right? So, <laughs> No, I don't. But if Sonic's only comparison is, like, Wade... Then he's probably like, oh no! Every I was gonna say officer. it's like Tom might not have shot anyone, but he's definitely covering up for Wade's incompetency. <laughs> and if they're not gonna go after the other bad cops. The whole institution is fucked. <laughs> like, I liked it. Oh man, you know that that beginning scene does have some Sonic Adventure uh, homages. Yeah, which is yeah. neat. Which everyone knows because it was in the trailer, but it's still neat to mention mm-hmm. here in this very in-depth discussion we're having about sonic he did the pose he did do the pose he did the pose later <laughs> well he's he did the pose yeah he did do, he did do the pose uh and and the water came out of of the uh the sewer and then and then also he ran on a building and and he uh 
and and then Tails twice. had confidence. So uh, Tails gains confidence. Um, I guess Tails is pretty much Tails the whole time, right? Like he doesn't really go through any sort of deep arc or anything, right? Not yeah, a deep arc, but there is one. Right. You know. Yeah, a little bit. He's like, oh, right, because at the beginning he's like, I, I don't know if I can do it or if I can be part of this. And he's like, sure you can. Yeah, I just I just came here to warn you. Like, I'm not going to have an adventure. Right. Although I think in the book that that's not really there. Because I, I think Tails oh. is like, oh, you could use a two-tailed friend or whatever. And he's like, sure, yeah, we're friends, huh? So, so at some point the writers of the movie went, maybe, maybe we should just we sh- we should make tails be a little unsure at least at the beginning. It, 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 it is it is so much better than 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 what, than what we all assumed, which was that Sonic and tails were gonna have a falling out. Like the, the, that was, yeah. what, that was yeah. what we thought we were gonna be, but then no, it was just oh, just t- tails got hurt and Sonic felt guilty about it, and that was it. Tails, thank God, passed out for fifteen and a half minutes of the movie. Wow, <laughs> he probably has brain damage. <laughs> he was introduced. <laughs> And then they took him away from us for an, an eighth of the movie. <laughs> Ma- and then they strange. and then they had Maddie have to like and then since Maddie was using Tails like technically you you probably could have like there's probably a version of this movie where like Maddie was replaced with Tails proper like Sonic was captured and Tails has to like break in on like on his own like using his gadgets like may like maybe if it was like Tails and Maddie like doing it together to save Sonic and Tom like that would have probably been better than uh, Maddie and Rachel. Speaking of passing out, like Sonic passes out three times in this movie, when he gets shocked by Jiuin, when he washes up on the shore, and when he rescues Knuckles, it's like, stop! So much passing out. He Cut almost out. get he almost gets knocked out when he's fighting Knuckles at the beginning too. Oh yeah. Right. Why isn't there a bit where when Sonic wakes up, Tails is hovering over him and he goes, "Good thing you're okay." <laughs> oh, the uh, the uh, just, just on a snooze cruise, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the uh. Do I look like I need your power line is in a different place in the actual movie than in the trailer. That threw me off. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it like a big thing. Epic, it was just something right. I noticed. All right. Yeah. Because, it, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, cause in the scene, like when he, when he grabs Sonic, it's like he's not speaking. You know? they, 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 they remove they removed the line, the dialogue. So it's just him. But I, I think it, it worked. I feel like the line worked better in the trailer context. But I like the way the scene worked in the movie where like, yeah, Sonic runs right toward him and Knuckles is silently pushing him towards. Like it, it has that whole thing of like, oh, like Sonic's going at full speed and Knuckles is just stopping him like a badass, just pushing him back like nothing. And it's like, oh, it makes Knuckles seem so much more like effective and scary. Uh, in that context there there are a couple things oh in the tra- oh you go on no no go ahead go oh ahead. i was just gonna say there, there are a couple things in the trailers also that are changed like yeah. tails doesn't have a backpack right um when when the tornado yeah knuckles is with them on the tornado right they remove knuckles and, and when they're flying you don't see the death egg robot you just see a tornado in the trailer um well, also no, tails goes it's, it's... my name's tails and you see him say it but that he doesn't say that on in the tornado. He says it way, way earlier when he actually meets Sonic. Yeah, it makes sense though that Knuckles isn't on the plane in the trailer because he literally leaves like right then, and that's when Sonic says, "Okay, here's the plan." Mm-hmm. Whereas in the trailer, it's right after Tails says, "Names Tails." Well, it's a, it's yeah. the same shot. Yeah, and also because like the, those are clearly trailer shots. Like they like they 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 specifically like made it so like oh like they didn't they didn't have the death egg robot finished, so they just put the tornado thing. And then because like the the, the the like the final trailer has the death egg robot in there, and then yeah, then they they kept Knuckles out of there because they're like oh yeah, we don't want to spoil that Knuckles and all but, them. Are, no, yeah. what I'm saying is they didn't edit Knuckles out because he leaves very early in that plane scene. No, no, I think they edit Knuckles out. I think it's the yeah, no, the, yeah, because the, the, yeah, yeah there's the, the, the one shot like the first shot where they're where they're flying toward uh, the Death Egg robot. And it's like yeah, Knuckles is there like before they're doing like the dialogue. And it's like yeah, there is like there is a shot in the trailer that was like that had like Knuckles in the movie. Right, they pulled mm-hmm. an Avengers. They pulled an Avengers Infinity game. <laughs> lots of blockbusters do that because it's like oh either yeah. to avoid spoilers or to just oh just animate this thing for the trailer and then it'll be different in the movie because it's like oh because because they always they because it's the, like when movies are made like they focus on they do the trailer shots first so that that so they have something for the trailer because like most of the time by the time that first trailer's done the movie's only maybe 20 percent finished so next up Next up in the list of what I liked, uh, I liked when Sonic said, "If I die, don't look in my closet." I thought it was funny and it made me laugh. I saw <laughs> that was a really good line. <laughs> I saw when Robotnik was on a tractor. I pointed at the screen and laughed. It was good. Ah, <laughs> uh, he he drove that tractor really well. I like that. Um, it's hilarious. Uh, 
uh, uh, when the priest opened up his Bible to reveal his gun. That was a good joke. Yes, <laughs> everyone has a gun. <laughs> I liked the the rule of threes when we have you know angry person in the tavern, angry person in the tavern, grandma, but she's knitting a crossbone skull thing. It was good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh um, man, I thought it was adorable when Tails covered Sonic with his tails while they slept. Aww. It was great. Yeah, that was a cute moment. that's a good yeah. shit. That was the one thing where my girlfriend, she's always been like, Tails is weird. I think probably just because it gets a reaction out of me. Of course I'm going to defend Tails' honor. <laughs> but when it happened, she finally leaned over and was like, okay, maybe Tails is cute. I was like, damn right. <laughs> damn right. Did, did, you, did you say, finally, woman, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> finally, woman, you understand. <laughs> I don't know why. And then I unga bunga out of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Dishonored and maidenless. <laughs> I liked when they made fun of the GUN acronym. Uh, we already covered that. I actually mm. like the doubling down on the Olive Garden thing. I liked when he said, cancel my five o'clock at Olive Garden. <laughs> uh, the Robotnik suit makeover scene was cool. Oh, right. There's a. There's got, a to actually, yeah. oh. got to actually see an Eggman in there. Yeah, that's right. Classic Eggman is, is hiding on the screen. It's like, wow, you could do it. Are you going to do it? You won't do it, but you should do you it. You won't do it. It made me, made me think of the Eddie LeBron <laughs> Eggman, actually. It kind of had his like physical build, too, and I was like, huh. Right. I guess it is kind of, it's harder to do like the classic Eggman suit in live action. The, the modern Eggman suit is easier to do, I think, but yeah. the classic one. But the classic one's so good. Ah, Be sure <laughs> to buy your Hallmark ornament. <laughs> Rebecca really likes this line. Well, I don't, I don't, she laughed a lot when Robotnik said there are good people on both sides. Uh, <laughs> that, because, you know, he's evil mm-hmm. and the other guy who says that is definitely evil. So mm. it was a funny comparison. Mm. Let's edit that out, I guess. No one else thought that. It's hilarious. No, it was, it was a good was line, funny. but it, it is like, huh? Real life, eh? I agree with you. I just don't want to hold the pace up if you have more to say. <laughs> um, Sonic running through all the traps is what we came here to see is a note that I wrote down. The third act was really, really, really good. Oh, man, Sonic. Um, Agreed. Agreed. Right. It was all Sonic. Uh, Sonic matures a little bit. Tails becomes a little more brave. Knuckles learns to trust people. So I'm glad that our characters had some arcs. They did. What I didn't like. Oh. Uh, how did the dog get into the attic? You have to climb a ladder to get up there. How did he get up there in the <gasps> beginning of the movie? Huh. Um, I need you have answers. a doggy ladder. <laughs> what the dog doing? Maybe the dog <laughs> came through that window in the ceiling. <laughs> that makes less sense. <laughs> <laughs> Tails helped him up. Don't don't ask questions. <laughs> she had a pretty cool comic about that dog, actually. Uh, That's true. The map. the map with the message thing is extremely Hollywood, and I hated it. It was very Star Wars-y. Uh, do, do you yeah. like the novel version better with the moonlight? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't... I'm not going to say I liked the map hologram thing, but Sonic did say she was like Obi-Wan Kenobi in the first movie, yeah. who isn't the one in the hologram, so I'm not yeah. sure why that makes sense in my head, but at least it fairly right. ties together. Also, if he calls her Obi-Wan Kenobi... <laughs> that makes it worse for me, Chris. <laughs> Right. If he calls on Claw Obi Wan Kenobi, I feel like that kind of undermines the fact that that's his one parental figure. I mean, Obi Wan is there for like three minutes before he dies for Luke. And um, clearly, <laughs> you haven't seen the Disney Plus Kenobi series because <laughs> that really explains a lot, bro. <laughs> right? There's a whole. He's totally a dad you're, after that one. You're missing all the lore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, David. Oh heck, it's coming soon on Disney Plus Plus Plus. Which is different from Paramount uh. Plus, where Knuckles will be Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> you have to pay for the expansion and the membership on top of oh. your subscription uh. and your bonus premium membership, and then you can and watch Apple it. TV Plus. You can just end me now. Then you can watch it and also play Majora's Mask. Okay, now I think you're on to something here, right? Um, I don't like that Sonic is only as fast as any scene needs him to be. <laughs> It's really inconsistent. <laughs> yeah. Like when Robotnik is standing at the Master Emerald saying, ha ha ha, I have it. And they talk for 30 seconds. It's like, wow, you could have ran over there and stopped them. But you right. didn't. Could have punched him in the face. And then Robotnik would have been like, oh, you punched me in the face. You're so fast. Wow. Uh, it's like it's you your know, power. 
Right. So at the beginning of the movie, Robotnik has the quill still, and he, he sticks in his tongue because I guess he's addicted to the zap. Um, then he immediately he like completely <laughs> gotta go fast about it once he realizes there's something else. He's still gonna use the quill to do things. He just he uses it in the first movie to be as fast as Sonic. Right. So he could have been like, "I have it. I'm touching it. Like we're talking in fast." <laughs> If you really wanted it to, did, 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 doesn't he basically like did use use the power of the quill like in, in order to use like he it, it, isn't it supposed to imply that he quote unquote overuses the power of the quill in order to use like to create that like giant uh, like uh, energy signal that like summons Knuckles and those guys because we don't see him with the quill for the mm. rest of the movie. Uh, after that, Knuckles says, "Where did you get that?" When he's holding the quill. Oh, that's right. He does still have glowing. Yeah. Right. That that quill has a lot of excess power. We were never shown it like dying. If it died, that would have been like, oh, can't guess can't use it anymore. But he still has it. He just doesn't use it because I don't need it. I've got I've got buzz bombers now, uh, which he does. <laughs> Man, he's got buzz bombers. And then and then and also uh, knuckles who because oh the do does he look like he needs his power? He has knuckle. He has knuck. He has like knuckle <laughs> knuckles to be his power. So right, it, it is I interesting like, yeah, that. Whatever. It's interesting that Knuckles seems to have, like, chaos power, like Sonic does, although neither of them have ever been around the Master Emerald or the Chaos Emeralds, because it's been hiding on Earth for years and years and years. So how did they get their power? Because, I mean, I did listen to an interview where uh, Pat Casey implied that, oh yeah, Sonic's power is connected to the Chaos Emeralds, but I'm not going to explain why, because you gotta watch a movie. Watch it! I can't spoil it! I'm a writer! And then, then you watch the movie and it's like, well, it didn't get explained at all, actually. Like, Sonic still just has this thing, which seems to make him all electric, and Knuckles can also be electric. But how are they electric? Tails isn't electric, but he's fast, too. What? Yeah. What? Ow. Yeah, okay, especially because you we assumed that, I mean, it, it probably was a thing of just, oh, in the first movie, they had no idea that they were going to actually do Master Emerald, so, oh, the Kidnas are just after Sonic because, oh, Sonic has a special power, but, like, now with what we know, it feels like the re- the, the, the retroactive retcon was, oh, Sonic had some, in- Sonic had some connection with uh, the Master Emerald because he got the power and the Kidnas are after him because, oh, he has connect- he's connected to the power, so he, they must, he must know something, so it feels like, but yeah, but they never actually explained that. So maybe that'll be for the third movie. I mean, especially because oh, Shadow is probably gonna have chaos power, which means he probably got powered like somehow. So maybe it's a thing of we learn that oh, Sonic, Shadow, Knuckles, like maybe some other characters are like oh, they all got powered by the Master Emerald in some way because of Wait, reasons. I they better not do the arc and have the the giant laser. Because the Master Emerald has been, and the Chaos Emeralds have been sealed away for thousands of years, which means Gerald never had access to those, or, or to build a laser based on them. Unless he yeah. found it and went, whoa, I'll leave it and here. <laughs> he puts it back. <laughs> I I did like, just uh, with the inclusion of Long Claw and everything, just kind of... There's sort of just a point in the movie where Sonic is, like, the inheritor of, like, the legacy of the Owls, and Knuckles is, like, the... He, he has the legacy of the Echidnas. And I think it's just kind of neat that, like, they've been at war, and then those two then have to be bestest buddies together to, to get the Emerald back. So I was like, oh, that's cool. That's a, that's a neat theme. Yeah, it is. It's, it's like we're not going to continue the, the sins of our ancestors. Yeah, it's like they're 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 the the end of the lines, and they're gonna be buddies and friends. And it's like, oh, Sonic yeah, Heroes. That's really good. Yeah, I was so expecting that it was gonna end with Knuckles like taking the Master Emerald and being like, "Now nah, I'm gonna go and look look after this somewhere." And like he leaves, and it's like, "So I'll see you in your spinoff." But like, no, Knuckles stays with them, and it's like, oh, he gets to be part of the big family. It's like, oh, it's it's, it's it was so <laughs> that that was so nice and like good to see him being like, oh, all three of us will be the guardians of the Master Emerald. Right. I have an entry for things that made me laugh on my list. <laughs> How do you mention that? I like that. I think it's Tails who talks to Sonic after he goes back to normal form. He's like, you had unlimited power. Why did you turn that down? And he's like, uh, I've still got some going up to do. And then Knuckles just immediately waltzes up. He's like, we need to establish a universal order to protect the emeralds and all these serious things. And he's just like, yeah, let's go. Woo. <laughs> he's like, Okay. Yeah, maybe give a little space between those two sentiments, but I like the cut of your jib. Oh, also yeah. the the chili dog from this guy, total. That was 
that's stupid, but I like that, I guess. Dog ears were sticking out of Knuckles' eyes. Why, why you know- I was so turned on! <laughs> Chris, why do you, why do you hate Black Knight so much? Why do you hate Black Knight? <laughs> it was cool there, because he already had the chili dog, and he caught it cool. And this one, he's like, I have literally got wall chili dog, and then it <laughs> fell. And I was like, all right, got to go fast. I get right. it. So so in the movie, <laughs> Sonic, it's reestablished his love for chili dogs. We see him have one. We know that Old Knuckles, school. he mentions grapes at the end. But there is a decisive God. lack of food representation for yeah, Miles for mint. Flower. No mint. Right. I mean, no they mint. talk about getting ice cream at the end. What's the flavor of ice cream? Mint. Like mint chocolate chip. Oh, yeah. ah. no. Of vanilla? Yeah. yeah. Oh, poor Tails. <laughs> I, I attended a technically called fan screening, which I think just means they played a dumb forced interview between Ben Schwartz and Idris Elba at the beginning. Yeah, I saw that And it was too. one of those stupid things... Yeah, it's like who who do you like running or boxing? And then Ben Schwartz is like, oh, I like to run. And you teach yourself us like, uh, boxing. Yeah, that's what Knuckles would say. And it just says something like chili dogs are grapes. And he just has the most like, why am I here and what are what is happening? <laughs> look on his face. Yeah, 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 oh. the, yeah the, the, the whole thing was very kind of like, yeah, yeah. This is something. Yeah, this is just something that they're saying of out of obligation. But I did like when they got to the yeah. video game thing, and then Ben Schwartz is just like, okay, look, if Idris, if masculine hunk Idris Elba somehow likes video games more than me, I have nothing. <laughs> it's just him basically like going off. <laughs> script like that it's like okay that that's really funny and then yeah they don't even cut to Andrew Selma because it's like yeah there's no point in asking him that he just kind of laughs uh, so what's the video game <laughs> poor like, Andrews like, grapes he's in a world that he has no idea <laughs> he has no idea what he's in for like the, the unfathomable amount of nerddom heading his way oh. I would like good luck bruh was <laughs> was there all the interviews where he was like he was talking with Jeff Fowler like it was like Jeff Fowler was talking with him about how like how he really wanted to like get into like oh Knuckles as a character and he wanted like he wanted like him Fowler to tell him like oh what 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 what, what really made him tick? that's because like, he, he didn't wanted, know like, who yeah. Knuckles was he thought <laughs> Knuckles was a good character and then once he did the dive it was like oh he's the dumb dumb well damn. <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff every actor says he's like yeah I just really want to get into the character you know man. AKA, I went and watched the Sonic Forces cutscenes and all the other cutscenes and went, oh. Oh, we <laughs> should have started with Adventure. At least Knuckles is a bit more respectable. Just <laughs> well, let well, it go. Well, I, well, I, I, don't, well, I, 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 I don't think he actually looked up. I think it's more he just asked Fowler to be like, okay, g g give me give me all the juicy deets. And then Fowler just gave him like the, the cliff notes of, okay, here's, <laughs> right. what, here's what matters. Just save me time, man. <laughs> he, he, just, he just gave him the, the, the Penders comics. It's like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that this is your guiding light? <laughs> is that why Enerjack's in this movie? No, don't uh, don't say it. Enerjack's uh, in this movie? <laughs> nope, nope. That's not a real word. You can't keep saying that word. It's not real. Locke is in this movie? <laughs> Whoa, that we are legally not allowed to say that word. <laughs> no, no, it, 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 it's Locke spelled character. L A C H. That's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that guy, he's great. Ooh, okay. I'd like to point out that. Angel Island is not in this movie anywhere. Yeah. I thought the temple was going to be Angel Island and it would like come up, yeah. Right, but it wasn't, which means like everything about Knuckles mm. in everything has always been like, oh yeah, Angel Island, the floating island. Uh, except for Boom, although maybe it, it did exist, he just didn't care anymore. But but here it's just straight mm. out. He got There's lost. Nothing. I guess the OVA doesn't mention Angel Island either, but whatever. Uh, yeah. They smartly now don't have to deal with people going, why isn't he on Angel Island? Right. Especially if they're all <laughs> guarding the Master Emerald together, there's no reason for him to ever leave Sonic's side. Yeah, this means that Tom and Maddie's attic is very packed. <laughs> oh, do you think it's a Sonic dorm is at this con point? Is he just constantly shouting at Tails and Knuckles not to go in his closet? Yeah, and he's just farting. <laughs> he's like, I'm using real farts this time. <laughs> Like, don't open that closet. That's where I store all my farts. <laughs> Keeping the Master Emerald in the ice cooler that they keep forgetting. Oops. Oh, oops. Oh. Alright, but they seem vastly uninterested in the fact that the Chaos Emeralds have scattered and are somewhere. Doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah, there's... there's Eggman's in my A. Don't worry, bro. Right. There's sprinkles to eat. Yeah, yeah, it does end very much like, oh, we could bring him back if we want, but maybe he's dead. But it's like... you. 
you should care a little bit more about what's just happened. <laughs> yeah, that was what I was kind of weird about the fact. Yeah, like that, that Sonic knocked him down, crush, and then they just don't care about it. It's like, shouldn't you at least, if you don't care about killing him, like at least check to make sure that he's dead. Like, don't just be like, eh, whatever. It's like either <laughs> a, either actually capture him or make sure that he's actually killed. Because yeah, he's gone. You don't know where it, where he is. Yeah. Um. Even even Gwen, while they're looking for him. They don't find him, so yeah, he really could just still be around. Mid search, doesn't he just say like "good riddance" or something? It's like, oh, there's no way he could have survived, even though we clearly can't find a body, even though there's definitely yeah. would be a body because <laughs> it's not like he was disintegrated by being crushed by a giant robot or anything. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Those are mutually exclusive. Either you find him, or he's <laughs> he's right missing. Right, and I, and I guess Stone is like, oh, I'm gonna find him. Oh, man, maybe it'll be a thing like, okay, you know, uh, remember the television series Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman? Of course you did. You watched all four seasons. So, you know, at the end of the first season, um, uh-huh. uh, the guy who plays Lex Luthor, what's his name? John She? 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 Uh-huh. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anyway, it was like, he didn't want to keep on flying out to, to, to the West Coast because he lived in New York. He's like, I don't, I don't want to keep on flying. So, even though he's like one of the main characters, he's like, fellow okay, he's, he's going out there. Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay, in the finale, I'm going to jump off a building and die, even though Lex Luthor would never do this for any reason. So then through most of the second season, he is just on ice. So they have like fake versions of him, like behind frosted glass. So, you know, he doesn't have to actually just be laying there. It's like, oh, man, maybe, you know, they could do that. Where in the third movie, Agent Stone just has Robotnik under frosted glass. And you're like, is that Jim Carrey or is that a reasonable facsimile? (laughs) <laughs> or it's literally they just spend the whole movie with Gerald. Oh, but Gerald would be dead, wouldn't he? <laughs> or would he? He could still be alive Whoa. and just imprisoned. He's like, I've been in here for 50 years and I'm 83 and a half. God help me. Right, but if, if I'm Danny DeVito. But, okay, so if he's younger, <laughs> like if you try to say, oh, Gerald was in his 30s 50 years ago, then you have to... Like Maria can't be his granddaughter. It would have to be his his daughter, I guess. Eh. Also, eh. I'm thinking. Also, I keep feeling that if Carrie is in it, then they're gonna have Carrie also be Gerald. It just feels like something. Yeah, they would do. yeah. They have, they'll, they'll have him do double <laughs> and just make him old. Oh, like the Nutty Professor, uh. or the Nutty Professor too. <laughs> Actually, Eddie Murphy Club would time. be a pretty good Gerald Robotnik too. That's not a bad choice. Uh, um, well, and and uh, I mean, in series of unfortunate events, I mean, he's playing one character, but he's playing like the the multiple dis- the multiple disguises. So it's like, oh, uh, he, Neil- Carrie is known for doing that kind of like, oh, like kind of quote unquote pretend like being quote unquote multiple mm-hmm. people. Have I said on the TCR that I want Willem Dafoe to be Shadow because that's what I want? Ooh. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I, th- I that would be cool. I think Ke- Keanu Reeves is my is most people, and I think my my fit. I think that would fit mm. the best. I, if we had recorded this two weeks ago, I would have said Gilbert Gottfried, but I guess it's not, <laughs> oh. it's not on the table anymore. No, mm. Gilbert Gottfried would would have been an amazing vector. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Inspired. I like it. Oh, yeah, give me great. Will Smith for Shadow. Rest in peace. Hey, not to be insensitive, but we have AI voices for actors now. No. It's okay. Apparently no. that's no. good enough to use. Oh. Maybe. What but if... Some some major franchises feel like that's a thing you can do even when the actor is still alive, as it turns out recently. I won't say what. Right. So, hey. Oh, my God. Eh, true. Oh, they, they could just take all the clips from the Aladdin TV show and stitch them together very awkwardly. I'm sure you could have <laughs> him say, Sonic, I am the ultimate life form using various episodes maybe even a little king of thieves action in there <laughs> wow <laughs> i i i i had, i had suggested this earlier but do you think that they that I, i'm i'm i feel like they're also gonna have rouge here because again like oh like it feels like oh they, they, they it feels like they're gonna have a, i mean tails they kind of already had a hard time figuring out what to do and i feel like oh knuckles already went through his arc they're not gonna like know what exactly to do with him because oh shadow the shadow is the one who's gonna have the arc so it's like oh give him a love interest and give him something to the chase uh to like and protect the master on mm. so like rouge kind of feel and also so like they can have a female character because it's like oh it feels like that'd be something you'd be like not just having more more dudes it's like oh here's a girl if if they bring rouge i really really hope they lola bunny her like they did in space jam 2 oh yeah <laughs> that 
That's a controversial opinion, apparently, Stephen. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> I, they, they better, because uh, I don't hmm, want that. It's true. I want to see Rouge the Bat play basketball. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Rouge basketball! <laughs> um, man. So, like, if, they, if they're bringing in Shadow, we know that. Mm. Bringing in Rouge seems very obvious. Does that mean that... Before Amy. Right, what about Amy? Is she not... Are they going to risk this many of Sonic's, quote, animal buddies, unquote? We need a girl. <laughs> I mean, right. Is is it? Are they going to go, okay, either we have Rouge or Amy, we can't do both? Or or will they try to do both? They should There'll do There'll be both. a lot of characters right. to oh. keep track of if there's like Shadow and Gerald. Amy Rose is going to be a treasure tracker. Right. Well, I mean, if or would Amy just like hang out with Ooh. Maddie and be like, oh, we're mm. going to have girls night out? I think it's I think it's not that difficult because like you know the uh, first movie introduces Sonic then we introduce two more I don't think three more is out of the question I guess not it's just it's then juggling a lot of characters is more my worry Well then you don't have each character with their own plot they just group together and have yeah. an A and B you know and mm. as as weird of a thought as it is I keep just imagining the the Alvin and the Chipmunk movies I mean you have three and three so <laughs> i mean right so you can do about six seven animated yeah, characters and then a couple humans what i was thinking of uh, yeah if yeah if amy like you have shadow and then you have amy and then if they decide to do metal sonic as well you could kind of do like a hedgehog havoc slight thing of like oh like having all the hedgehogs like kind of converging together it's like racing for the chaos emeralds I feel like that, like that, mm. that's that, that's that's something that 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 they that could they could like end up doing. I think that that could work well of like having like so many of those type of characters together. Like maybe like maybe like Amy, yeah, Sonic's looking for the Chaos Emerald. Shadow is Metal Sonic for Eggman, and then Amy's like chasing after like Sonic because oh she has a crush on Sonic and is like doing the thing. Tails is assisting Sonic, and then Knuckles and Rouge could have their own thing with the Master Emerald. And it's like oh there's those plots. Like maybe like Knuckles and Rouge that could be like a thing of like oh learning about oh the secrets behind like oh if it is chaos then be like oh that that's that's how they discover about like oh the threat of chaos and while they're all while everybody else is all just kind of fighting for the chaos emeralds and then in the end everything collides together and you get the big uh fighting the monster would amy show up in the same way as tails she hops out of a ring and goes i hope i'm not too late <laughs> <laughs> but since she can't fly i guess she would just like casually walk to the edge of the cliff look over and go huh. pico go <laughs> no a car a car jumps out of the ring and then like kind of swerves his side and she steps out of the driver's side door oh man <laughs> we could introduce breeze the anthropomorphic the car. Yeah, I'm like I'm all in for Breeze, the car, huh. which is so close to Breezy, which is from AOSTH, <laughs> which is also a hedgehog, but she's a robot. Oh, oh. oh spoilers for for a <gasps> cartoon show from '93. <laughs> Can't do that. It's episode one. <laughs> <laughs> right, they should just adapt Love Sick, Love Sick Sonic into a full length theatrical film, like. Just go, oh, I know we teased Shadow, but we came up with a better idea. We'll deal with Shadow later. <laughs> they just keep him in there. He doesn't actually get out of the tube. Right, it's just Breezy and, and Robotnik Jr., and it's their love story. And then at the end, Shadow the is fuck? just like, I'm still in this tube. I can't get out. <laughs> I hope at the end of Sonic 3, Rouge turns turns to Tom and says, Did I ever tell you that Shadow was a robot? <laughs> <laughs> and then we don't ever cl get clarification on it and part unless alien? you look at the behind the scenes of sonic 4 eight minutes in uh, <laughs> where we find no. out <laughs> shadow's real i mean i would hope that i i would like to see rouge definitely i want to see them all let's just do it just do sa just do it do it I think if, if they're planning to do more spin-off stuff, I think like oh, doing a chaotix like series and just like oh, you don't you don't have to worry about fitting the chaotix into a movie. Just do something with the chaotix like in in this universe. It's like that that, that that'd be fine. Like maybe oh. you can have one episode of them go to Earth and pass by Sonic and stuff, but that's it. I think yeah. that would be the perfect way of using them. What what if they did like a, a Rosencrantz and Guildenstein? So you just see yeah. like Vector in the background of every major scene for the first two movies, and he's like, <laughs> yes, ah! the, the, yes, the like the Chaotix were in the events of one and two, just in the background the whole time. That would be <laughs> oh, great. No. I would love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Mm. If Paramount wants to pay me to to write a visual novel about Big the Cat in every scene of, of uh, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog three, I'll do it. 
Paramount, do it. Call me, please. I will do it. It's gonna be good. Jeff Fowler still listening in, like you know. Okay, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I'm still here. Don't worry. Yeah, listening three hours in. It's like, wow, it's a great idea. Be like, yeah, it is. Thank you, Jeff Fowler. We're gonna bring. <laughs> we can't pay for an orchestra, but we'll pay for this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I probably cost less than. Uh... <laughs> Maybe I might. About the same. You are David the worker. Right. Could command quite a rate. That's right. I want at least thirteen fifty an hour. Point. <laughs> My fingers are crossed for the Knuckles show to be a Knuckles chaotic show. Ooh. That's right. Maybe, maybe we find out that hmm. Knuckles had gotten in contact with the Chaotix earlier and like paid them to look for Sonic. And oh, then, that's also... Right. And so then at the end, it's like he hasn't gotten back in contact with them and they're still looking for Sonic and then maybe they're like, ah, we found him! And, and Knuckles is like, I know, I am right here with Sonic. Can you see? And they're like, ah! Pay up, please. We found him. So they can do Rouge in the Chaotix show... And that allows her to appear in the movie without having to be introduced in the movie. And then they can introduce Amy. So that gives you, yeah, no. I can see then how you could do like the four hedgehogs to the, to the Emerald race. I, I see how I see it very working out. So, so would silver be in Sonic four then? Oh my. Yep. Pro time. Oh, yep. And time then yep, they, they get time travel going in. It's like, yep. David, I I really hope that Paramount releases Sonic CD before they release Sonic Three, <laughs> just just to make you upset. Ooh. Well, I mean, well, the the the, the 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 Knuckles series is, I guess, that could be considered Sonic CD, especially because it's right. called well, Sonic the Series. We don't Seri know which one's coming out first. No, well, the because it, it's coming out uh, next year, twenty twenty three, and then the move third movie is twenty twenty four. They've already confirmed. Oh, that. yeah. What if there was Sonic live action content every year for a decade? Wow, <laughs> guys! Oh God, it could happen. Look I'm forward to for it. it. I mean, they're still we're on what Transformers Seven from Paramount. Oh, if Sonic once 4, they find something that makes some money. If Sonic Four <laughs> isn't a two-parter, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> and if Sonic Four Episode Two of the movie doesn't end with a little planet trapped, All right? There's. And then they never resolve it. <laughs> I forget who said it, but there, there was a tweet of like, it was a tweet where it's like, uh, uh, S -S -S Sega executives sweating, trying to explain to Paramount why making a Sonic 4 is a bad idea. <laughs> uh, I guess I could give it a subtitle, like Sonic the Hedgehog, colon, adventure, colon, adventure four. for all. <laughs> adventure for all. Right. Or, or all, for one. Like, all for one. All for one. All for one. Hmm. Or, or Sonic the Hedgehog call it colon F O R E exclamation point, and it's just a golf game. Four <laughs> Sonic Golf, Sonic Golf, yeah. And he's like, "Hey, here I am, Ben Schwartz. I'm being paid more money, and I'm just going to talk about. Oh, I got a pokey. Oh, I got a birdie. Whoa!" And he's like, "I got a turkey." It's like, "No, tur turkey's about bowling." It's like, "No, oh, I got a hole in one." Touchdown. <laughs> okay. I don't know where are, I'm going we, with that. I feel like... Are we exhausted? Are we? Did we talk about everything? Let's see. So it starts with in, in the Mushroom Planet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's... There's three guys come in. We don't really know what their deal is, even after the prequel comic. That's weird. <laughs> right. And then, and, then, and then we see Sonic, and he's in Seattle, and he almost kills a few people, and he ruins it. He destroys the city block, apparently. And then, and then Tom, Tom and Sonic have a have a have a heart to heart on the boat, and then Sonic sends them off to Hawaii, and he he's like, hey, yeah, you know. oh god, he's actually doing it. Help! Uh, and then and then he destroys their house, and then fixes the house when Tom calls, but it doesn't matter because Robotnik destroys the house because he shows up, and Knuckles is like, I'm going to punch you in the face, and Tails shows up, and he's like, oh, guys, and then then they have a little car chase, so it's Sonic and Tails in a car instead of Sonic I'm just and Tom. Just gonna let this happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, instead of Sonic and Tom, it's Sonic and Tails. And Tails is like, oh, wow, you know, I've been looking for you. It's great. And he's like, well, who's that guy? And he's like, oh, Knuckles. He's like crazy. Don't worry about it. And so they drive and then they go to Wade's house. And Wade's like, my car is missing because Tails stole my car. But I'm not going to reference that because the car isn't here right now. And then Wade, you know, he's having fun in, in, in Mad Libs. And then and then we go, <laughs> right. And so then then the, the map talks to them, but it's Long Claw. And Sonic has a moment because he's like, oh, I, I do have a fully fledged character here. But we're not going to dwell on it too long because Robotnik needs to make some more pop culture references. Um, 
And then they go to Siberia, but Robotnik goes to Mean Bean, and he has a lot of Austrian goat milk. Like, he just takes a whole goat and just attaches it to his face. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then right, and Suckles that, and, the goat. <laughs> right. And so, and so then the, they, Sonic, has, Sonic and Tails have a dance-off, and, and Robotnik is like, haha. And then they go to Siberia, and they see the owl, and then we see Enerjack, but it's not Enerjack, because he doesn't look like Enerjack. Uh, please don't sue. Uh, right. And then, <laughs> oh, and, 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 and on, that, on that statue, there, there's, a, there's a, a Babylonian language... There's That's like, right. Yep. Tyson a Babylon's Hess. reference. Ah. Yep. Yes. Birds. Jet the Hawk mini series. That could be a Jet the Hawk. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so then they, they they do the ice cap zone, and then Sonic and Knuckles have a moment, but then Tails tases him, and he's like, "Hey, that's rude, uh, Sonic. You clearly are <laughs> lying to me." And then punches Tails, or Tails gets hurt, and Sonic goes after Tails, and then then like in Hawaii. Meanwhile, like uh, the, the 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 groom, the the guy that that Rachel's gonna marry, whose name completely escapes me, he's really chiseled. Oh, yeah. Rachel's groom miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and then, and then he's like, "Hey, don't mess with Rachel because I'll punch you in in the face." But he's also undercover, so I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe he would punch. Well, he punch. Yeah, well, he gets punched. But then, but then why did he say? I know it's the. <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> we just, just right, have to so end. Then, so then, then Sonic shows up in Hawaii, <laughs> and the dog is somewhere. <laughs> dog miniseries. <laughs> 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 And then you get the big, the big light, the light from the side, and it's like, oh look, it's like every every superhero movie ever In made. In 2025, coming to Paramount Plus, Sonic's dog. <laughs> what the dog? Doing? So then Sonic runs over the water, the and he says, "Gotta doing? go fast." And then someone left. <laughs> he <have> just left. <laughs> like Zeno. <laughs> He's like, I've suffered in silence long enough. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Spare me of this <laughs> fucking world. Who did we I lose to? No extol its virtues. <laughs> Who did we lose to in the ch- Tails Channel fight? <laughs> um, a hedge block. Hedge block. Oh, okay. Right. Let's see the hedge block do this. Right. Huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Tails. Right. Tails gets knocked out, and so so then so Maddie oh. and Rachel do 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 a bit together, and and then Rachel like almost murders everyone, but then she reconciles with her fake husband, and then Sonic wakes up and runs, and then Tails wakes up and steals a plane from somebody, and then. <laughs> And then Sonic almost drowns in the Labyrinth Zone, but Robotic and Knuckles went through the Labyrinth Zone first, even though Knuckles and Sonic 1 isn't canon. (laughs) (laughs) And then then Knuckles saves Sonic, and he's like, oh, I don't know, I saved you because you saved me, I don't want to talk about this. Um, (laughs) And then, and then, and then, and then, so after that, then the Sonic, um... Uh Right, so then, so the Robotnik goes to Green Hills, and he's green, just like the hills. And there's more milk, but Wade shows up, and he's almost he's just like, "Hey!" But then Wade gets captured, and Robotnik smells Agent Stone's brain, and is like, "I can smell your electricity; it tastes good." And then, and then the big <laughs> robot shows up, and then Sonic appears, and and the tornado appears, and Knuckles they they all fly, and they do the fight, and then they do the the Avengers pose, and Tails has a gun, and and Tom and Maddie are just standing there until they decide they need to help Sonic by by driving over, and Knuckles punches Robotnik in the chest, and the emerald comes out, but the big machine almost crushes Sonic, but then he turns super because the emeralds are there, and he's like, hey, look, I'm supersonic, and he does the fly, and then and then and then Robotnik apparently falls to his death, but probably not because why would he? And then and then. And then everything is okay except Stone is looking for Robotnik and, and Shadow wakes up somewhere because he hit snooze for 50 years and realized he should probably get out of bed. And there's but a he's cooler. only a week years old. Right. Uh, is that it? Did we cover it all? Sonic 2 in a nutshell. Presented by FTCR. <laughs> Insert Kid Cuddy. Say the night, Insert away. Kid Cuddy. Take my hand, I am zone. Good night, everybody. Right. Which is, of course, a separate continuity. But good night, everybody. <sighs> I've never been to Old Garden. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh.